Okay. Yeah, that's what we just said last year. Yeah. Okay. I have no variations in what we talked about previously. Proposed, right. It's not it's good story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd like to gavel in our regularly scheduled meeting for May 21st, 2012. If you'd all please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, roll call, please. Alderwoman Saunders. Here. Alderman Manister? Here. Alderman Leahy? Here. Alderman Tuohy? Here. Alderman Kramer? Present. Alderman Robertson? Here. Alderman Wynn? Here. Alderman Harper? Here. And Mayor Keller? Thank you. Uh, before we go any further, I'd like to um, uh, take a, a moment and recognize uh, the passing of Alderwoman Lorraine Cruson, who passed away this past week. Um, and I um, uh, want to thank her and uh, for her you know, years of service to the Brentwood community, both as a, an alderman, as a, uh, an employee, as a volunteer. Um, Lorraine was a, a great asset, and um, um, I think she did an outstanding job in all of her capacities. Um, and she was, uh, became ill last week. She was in a rehabilitation center hoping to come home um, and took a turn for the worse and passed away um, uh, uh, the middle of last week. Uh, the service was this morning. Um, it was very well attended. I'd like to, um, on behalf of her family, thank everybody that was able to attend that this morning. So if we could, if we could please just have a moment of silence for Lorraine Cruson. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda, Approval of the ad agenda for the May 21st meeting. Are there any changes to the agenda? Motion, please. All right, James. I'll move. So move. And second. I'll second, Your Honor. Motion is made by Alderman Wynn, second by Alderman Robertson to accept the agenda as submitted. <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Next item, item four consideration approval of the minutes from the April 16th meeting, 2012. Any changes to the minutes? I just wanted to thank Octavia for redoing them for me. They look great. Thank you. Okay. Do I have a motion, please? I move mm -hmm. to approve the April 16th minutes. Thank you. Second? Second, Your Honor. Motion is made by Alderwoman Saunders, the second by Alderman Leahy. Oh, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Just a point of clarification. Uh, remind me, did we, we did not amend these. These were just clarified previously? Or were no, they, they were amended from what was produced last time. Okay. Yeah. So this is an approval of the amended. Well, no, it's no. new submittal. It's the minutes that okay. are here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is that okay? All right. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Motion to approve the minutes from the May 7th meeting, 2012. Any changes? Motion to approve the minutes as submitted, Your Honor. Thank you. Any second? Second. Motion is made by Alderman Lay, second by Alderman Harper to approve the minutes from May 7, 2012. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item, item five. We do have a public hearing this evening. So it is now five minutes after seven. We're going to gavel in a public hearing for our 2013 Community Development Block Grant Fund grant. Ellen? <laughs> Thank you. The purpose of the public hearing this evening is to discuss the Community Development Block Grant Program and how the city would like to um, use the funds that are allocated to us annually. Um, there is a sign-in sheet that is next to um, our city attorney, Frank Albrecht. If anyone would like to speak during the public hearing, please sign in using the sign-in sheet. Also, there are public hearing handouts. Copies of those are available on the table outside the chambers. Um, the handout more fully explains um, the CDBG program and the potential use of funds for different types of uh, uses. In the past, the city has used the funds that we are receiving that we receive annually, which is an amount of twenty thousand um, dollars, for home improvements to um, owner-occupied um, residential buildings. These um, these funds basically allow the opportunity for um, for residents 
who again own their houses and also live in them to receive up to five thousand dollars in a forgivable loan to do improvements to their home including um, plumbing electrical roofing heating and cooling um, concrete work and tree trimming if uh, residents are interested they should contact the um, they can contact city hall and we'll provide you with the county's mm -hmm. information or you can contact the county um, offices directly and that information is also on our on our website um, the el to be eligible for the funds you have to meet certain income requirements um, the the uh, for a family of four a qualifying median income would be about fifty four thousand um, dollars the funds can also be used in addition to home improvement program um, for acquisition of property, for improvements to public facilities, for activities, um, for public services, for um, um, can, it actually can be used for privately owned utilities, and for um, the uh, creation of, of uh, low income housing. But again, this, the city has um, traditionally used the funds for primarily home improvement program. We have in the past also used them for. Um, to pay for ADA improvements to public facilities um, in our parks and in City Hall. Staff's recommendation this year is to use the funds again for the Home Improvement Program. We do have um, um, not quite yet a waiting list of applicants, but almost all, all but one of the current um, grants that's available um, is, is being used by residents. We think it's a program that is um, still very viable and one that our residents can benefit from. So that's our recommendation. Great. Thank you. We'd like one other comment before we open up to the public. We, the home improvement program that we do do, um, and Ellen, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, but um, uh, is administered for us through St. Louis County. So our residents submit the applications to them. Uh, they do the income evaluation, the home improvement evaluations, and those kinds of things. And, and it really has been a, a good program. Uh, they do go in, um, you know, uh, inspect the homes, make sure that they, you know, maybe need to bring things up to code and those kinds of things when they're doing it. So they help the residents do that as well. So um, it's a good program and it's worked very well for us. So at this time, I'll open up to the public if anybody would like to make comments with respect to the uh, development grant fund project or our funds that we receive on an annual basis. Please come forward and give us your name and address. Okay, hearing none, I'll make one other comment. We have to have the public he hearing every year in order to get the funds, so that's why we do this. So we appreciate you, um, uh, patience. Thank you. I'll close the public hearing. It is now nine minutes after seven. Next item, uh, bids. There are none this evening, is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Next item, item seven, hearing of any matters of public interest upon request of any persons present. If anybody would like to address the Board of Aldermen, please come forward and give us your name and address. Hello, Barry Williams, 9001 Pine Avenue. And uh, I was very pleased to be at m the memorial service today for Lorraine. And uh, it was nice to see so many people there, citizens and officials. And uh, during the service, it was, you know, I, I was trying to think of what can we do. I, I, it's just hard to imagine Brentwood without her. I think we all feel that way. She's been such a fixture in our community, so it's such a very good public servant. And I was thinking, what can we do to, you know, um, recognize her going forward into the future? And, and I have a suggestion. Uh, something occurred to me. As you may know, uh, she was very involved in the original uh, Madden Fest, the, the September <coughs> festival. And she always preferred the name Madden Fest. And, uh, of course, that name derives from the Madden family, Tom Madden and his family who owned the rock quarry here. Uh, and before Brentwood was incorporated under that name in 1919, the settlement was known as Maddenville. And uh, it occurred to me, maybe we should bring back the name Maddenfest as a tribute to Lorraine Cruson. I wish you'd think about that. Great idea. Thank you. Thanks, Bear. My name is Julie Pozo. I live at 2211 St. Clair Avenue. Um, at the last Board of Aldermen meeting, Alderman Saunders stated she was unaware that the mayor and aldermen received the same medical and pension benefits as the city's full-time employees. As my Ward 1 alderperson, I later asked Maureen exactly what those benefits were. 
I was appalled to learn the city covers 100% of the cost of your enrollment and 50% of the cost of your family members. I also learned the city contributes 6% towards a pension. This is a wonderful benefit. I am happy we can provide for our full-time employees. However, you are not full-time employees by any stretch of the imagination, nor were you ever intended to be. This didn't seem to right to me, but, in, but I thought in fairness I should find out what benefits some of our surrounding cities were providing their elected officials. I contacted Clayton, <clears throat> Richmond Heights, and Webster Groves. None offered their elected officials medical or pension benefits. As I spoke to these various administrators, I also got the feeling they thought it was a ridiculous question because they reminded me that these positions were not full time. Let me also remind you that you are far and above the highest paid elected officials. I don't know how or when these benefits became part of your compensation package, and I don't know how you came to justify these benefits for yourselves. If this was brought to the attention of the residents, I'm not sure it would be approved. Are you wrongfully taking advantage of a benefit that is not rightfully yours? Let me also remind you that, that you each were elected by your constituents to represent them and the needs of your respective wards, as well as the community as a whole. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe your main duty is to oversee the city's budget and to ensure the city is fiscally responsible with our tax dollars. I encourage each of you to think long and hard about what you are partaking in. I strongly believe these added benefits could result in elected officials staying in office for the wrong reason. We need pro productive members on our board, members that have the interests of the residents above their own. And then I have one more item that's unrelated to, to this. And um, I was beginning to fill out my summer calendar. And I like to include the city meeting dates and times on my calendar. And I noticed that the Ways and Means Committee meeting dates and times were not including it on the calendar, and I was wondering if this was an oversight. That's all. Okay, whatever. <clears throat> Karen Smith, 8930 Harrison. Um, I um, have some questions about the swap agreements that are. Um, <clears throat> Are the swap agreement that's part of the uh, Meridian development. I'm continuing to make my way through the Meridian agreements, um, and um, I um, want to thank Andy. He did give me a copy just before the meeting. I haven't had a chance to look at it, um, but you know, from friends and some research that I've done, you know, I believe these swap agreements are some sort of investment tool um, that are used to hedge some sort of risk. Um, and so I had questions related to what risk we're trying to hedge here. Why did we enter into this agreement in 2007? What risk were we trying to hedge? Um, and I guess an, an overriding question are, are these tools appropriate for us to be using? Um, you know, based on the current agreements uh, related, related to the Meridian Agreement, um, and there was a swap amendment to the original agreement, which actually consists of about four documents, um, it looks like we still have an obligation related to that swap agreement. Um, and it seems to me that if we're going to be remarketing these bonds, that you know that original swap agreement should not be needed anymore for whatever reason that it was used. Um, and if we are taking on, um, uh, I wonder if we're not taking on unnecessary risk. Um, I think we already have risk in that we are issuing tax-exempt bonds for private development, um, and the, there's no collateral backing up these bonds. That, those, that was very, very clear in those Meridian documents. Um, and they're based on the future sales of retail, and we have a lot of big box retail in Brentwood, which you know there's a lot of research out there that's saying that the big box stores are probably going to be struggling in the future going forward, giving our new economic reality. So we're already taking on significant risk. Um, and I'm just wondering if we're not overstepping our bounds. From what I can tell, there are no other redevelopment agreements that have swap agreements, um, but I'm wondering if we're taking on more risk than we should be. And you know, does the uh, city have some level of risk that is deemed acceptable, or, or at what level are we authorized to take on additional risk? Um, I'm wondering, um, I don't believe we have a finance committee, but I'm wondering if, if that is something that would be necessary going forward. Um, these are complex agreements that we are entering into. Um, and some of the questions that I've asked, even related to the Drury Agreement that was most recently 
um, uh, approved, I don't always am, am not able always able to get answers, direct answers to the question, specific answers. They're always kind of vague and kind of at a high level and very, very broad. And I'm just wondering if we understand enough to be providing the right oversight. Um, you all say you get very good advice from bond counsel, lawyers, banks, but all of those individuals and all the entities that they work for are incented to sell bonds, to sell their legal services, to make loans. Um, they're not going to make money if they don't do those things. And so it's in their best interest to move that, those, those sorts of vehicles forward. And so having us enter into all these redevelopment agreements and floating all these bonds um, is something that I, you know, helps them earn a living. And so do we have anyone here that understands what's going on, provides the oversight, um, and is looking out for the best interest of the taxpayers? I went back and looked at the redevelopment agreements for, for all of these different um, projects that we have in Brentwood, um, and we've taken on a lot of debt to support private development in Brentwood. Kenilworth, we floated $13.9 million, uh, million in bonds. Strassner was $9.85 million. Hanley Station was $25 million. Brentwood Point was $6.7 million. Hanley Eager was $23 million. That's adding up to $78 million before we entered into the Hanley Quarter. Hanley Quarter was another $51 million. Now, I know that merged in some of the debt from the Kenilworth and the Strassner, as well as from two, DD, two TDDs in Maplewood. But that's a lot of debt. Um, and although we think that's limited obligation to the city itself, it still is an obligation. Um, and just as a perfect example of how these things are complex and maybe not always working in the best example of the taxpayer, the most recent, uh, the Post had highlighted um, an issue with the most recent Meridian development um, and the fact that taxpayers have overpaid on the garage that was built, the metro garage that was built as part of that development at $15 a space, and that added up to a total of $15 million. But what the Post did not realize is that there's actually an additional $3 million worth of garage-related cost in the project cost in that TDD. So it's actually up to $18 million. And again, these are all costs the taxpayer is being burdened with at a time when all of us are struggling to make, you know, balance our own individual budgets. And I wonder if each of you individually would be willing to take on this risk with your own personal budgets. Um, given that you're asking the taxpayers to take on these kinds of risks. Thank you. Okay, we'll close public comment. Um, I'll try to address a couple of these real quickly. Um, Barry, I think that's a great idea. So we will take that to committee or bring it up at our next meeting. Thank you. Um, with respect to um, the benefits of the employees, I mean, that's a decision that uh, the city had made a while back um, and um, a number of us have taken advantage of. Um, I would contend that um, um, being an elected official in Brentwood, uh, there are days and weeks that it's a 24-hour a day job. Um, you know, and I think um, um, we, we receive those benefits. It's a great benefit. Um, a lot of cities are different. Um, a lot of cities don't pay their elected officials anything. Um, some pay them more than us. Um, uh, brought up uh, Mayor Florson, I think, makes $150,000 a year. Um, um, so, you know, again, there's um, uh, different ways of doing it. Each, every, each city is different. Um, a lot of cities have different benefits than we have. Uh, they aren't fortunate enough to provide the benefits they do to their employees that we do. So those are decisions that really the board has to make. And if the board makes a decision to discontinue those, that's a decision the board would make. But I, I don't think that it was ever something that was done to try to deceive the public um, um, or um, mislead anybody. Um, uh, Brentwood's been very fortunate to be able to provide the benefits to our employees and to the elected officials. Um, with respect to the swap agreement and TIFs and public assistance, and, and this is a battle we've been fighting since, you know, or 1994 when we did our first project. Um, you know, um, there are examples of, uh, you know, economic tools are available to us. Um, in general speaking terms, um, uh, we need to evaluate each project on an individual basis and then see whether they merit the assistance that is being requested. Um, uh, these are tools the municipalities use. 
um, like any tool, if they're used inappropriately, um, you know, if you hit your thumb with a hammer, it hurts. If you hit the nail, it, the nail goes in. And um, um, I think we, we do do our best to review and analyze um, uh, uh, these uh, projects when they come along and try to make the best decision with the information we have for the city of Brownwood and for our residents. I would say in general terms, all of the bonds that are issued with public assistance, um, otherwise they couldn't have public assistance, are tax exempt. That's part of what they are. Um, with respect to the swap agreement, in general terms, um, the agreement that was entered into with the Meridian Project in 2007, uh, when those bonds were issued, the swap agreement is basically a variable rate bond. Uh, the rate changes on a daily basis. Um, it was determined at that time, given the market conditions and those kinds of things, that that would be the best, that would save interest for the city. And so, um, or I should say save interest for the, for the uh, payment of those bonds. Um, so that's why that agreement was entered into at the time. Um, and, um, but the risk, there isn't any risk on a TIF or a TDD um, uh, to the city of Brentwood. Uh, again, the but for argument on economic development says if not for the assistance then the project wouldn't happen. And if it wasn't for the revenues being generated for the project, you wouldn't be able to pay off those bonds. And so um, the TDDs, um, all of them are separate taxing entities. They are a corporation formed within the state of Missouri. There's no obligation to uh, or, or risk to the city of Brentwood. Uh, those bonds are issued. Kept, they collect a special sales tax from those districts, and they pay off those bonds. With respect to the same thing, with respect to the um, TIFs, um, you know, those anal anal analyzed and, and issued, um, and uh, the risk really goes back to the bondholder who buys those bonds based on the uh, rating of the bonds, the development, the tenants, and they make a decision whether to buy those bonds knowing that if the revenues aren't generated from that project by the time the 23-year the statute of limitation or statute runs out on those bonds, that they're not going to be able to be paid back. With the Meridian project, that was the only one that we actually ensured that the bondholders had some extra protection within the redevelopment agreement because we had never entered into a swap agreement before. The developer had to um, back those bonds with a letter of credit, which would have meant that at the end of the 23 years, if the bonds weren't fully paid, that letter of credit would be called and they would pay off those bonds to the, to the bondholders. So I think, uh, you know, again, that's in a nutshell. It's, it's a lot more complicated than that, but, you know, I think we've done a, 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 a tried to do our best to make sure that, you know, these projects are, are beneficial. Um, I will use the, the example of the promenade. That was a $20 million TIF. Um, it paid off in a little bit over 12 years. Um, the, um, uh, prior to that redevelopment, that area generated $60,000 in property taxes and basically no sales tax for, this, for the community. Today, that is generating, and so for the school district, they got about half of that property tax, so they got about $30,000 a year. So from 1996, uh, when that project was issued to um, when the, those bonds were paid off in April of two years ago, uh, they still got their $30,000 a year in their property taxes, but they forego the, the new property taxes. So the bonds were paid off two years ago, April. Now the school district, the, the project or the area is generating almost a million dollars a year in property taxes. School district gets about half of that. It's generating almost $2 million in sales tax. And um, um, that, again, a portion of that goes to the city of Brentwood. So I think an example of a very successful project and the right use of, of the economic development tools that were available at the time. Um, I think we do put a lot of effort into it in making those decisions and, um, um, and we hope to prosper from those benefits as we move forward. Um, so anyway, that's my, t yes, Patrick. Um, I'd like to add, you mentioned the swaps and the risk. When you're talking about a swap agreement, the risk you're trying to prevent is interest rate risk. What that means is you pick a fixed rate so you know how much interest you're going to receive or have to pay. When you have the variable, you need a crystal ball. Give you an example. If I offered to buy your house at today's market value, or if I told you I'll buy it three years from now at the three-year market value, you really don't know where that is going to be. If you're anticipating the market value is going to go up, you'll take that variable 
if you think it's just gonna remain flat, you take the fixed rate. So it's not that we're taking on more risk for revenue, it's you reduce the risk of variability and the uncertainty. So that's what's referred to as interest rate risk. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay. Your Honor. Yes, all of them, Sanders. Yes, I've, I've kind of looked into the swap, too, and fortunately this weekend I was able to run into Alderman Tui, and he understands these um, the, the swaps a little bit better and was just saying that, you know, with the variable rates, if you need to have more of a fixed rate income, a steady flow or something more that you can budget, then sometimes you'll do these. You'll trade off. You may give up a little bit into doing that, but then you know that you're going to receive the revenue or the payments are going to be fixed, and that's the trade off there. So it's not, these swaps aren't like um, the credit default swaps or the riskier swaps. So I, I have learned that. And um, I do think it was helpful, your mayor, that you did explain, though, more about the bonds and that Alderman Tui you helped. And um, in the future, I think maybe if we, if possible, if there was like a memo, just, you know, briefly summarizing and kind of the parties and the tools and what, what their purpose is, that would be, that would be helpful. Um, because I have a difficult time explaining it to the residents myself, and I learned from Alderman Tuhi too, Good. on this. And then, as far as the benefits, I think if there's a concern in the residents, maybe we should start to see what how the residents feel about it um, going forward. Um, maybe with the comprehensive plan update or something, it'll probably uh, opportunity to get some input. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Your Frank, Honor, if oh, I, may add to that. I, I think I don't know how much work this would be, but it would be interesting to find out how much more our personal taxes would be if we did not have these developments in place over the last 15 years, plus. Right. I think that would be a pretty shocking amount of, of money if people knew how much their their lives have been improved in Brentwood because of these developments, with no risk to us with these bonds. Okay. I'd like to add one more point. Um, sure. Patrick. Also, the tax rate point that um, Mayor Kelly mentioned, no government authority can tax another government authority. So what I mean by that is if you buy a municipal bond, the federal government cannot tax it. That's why they're tax free. We didn't give them a special privilege. Vice versa, if you bought a federal treasury T-bill or bond, the state or the local government cannot tax that. That's just the law. That's the way it's written. So there isn't a special consent consent given for tax-free well uh, no uh, sorry but um, and I would point out another thing if they weren't tax exempt we would our bonds would be paying a higher interest rate which would mean it would cost the taxpayers more because there's a tax benefit to the people that own the bonds um, and these are any municipal bonds any TIF bonds any TDD bonds are tax exempt and that's one of the benefits of being of, of issuing those kinds of bonds it keeps our interest rate as low as possible so that we can pay them off at a, at a faster pace. Right. Yes, that's correct. Your Honor, just one uh, more for me, too. I thought that was a, it was a good clarification, because I also called my son, too, who does finance. And the difference between the revenue bonds, TIF revenue bonds, versus tax obligation bonds. And so it is the revenue from the project that pays off the bonds. And if the revenue is not there, they don't come anywhere else, though, to the city to get it. it, it the risk is on the bondholder. I didn't know if it's that or the underwriter yeah. or just the bondholder. It's bondholder. Bond bond thank you. They are not obligations of the city. Okay, thank you. Okay. If I get a motion for the first and second readings of bills number 5672, 5673, 5674, 5675, 5676, 5677, and 5678. Well, I'll do the resolution when we get to it. So moved, Your Honor. Second. And second. So first and second reading only. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> first reading of bill number 5672, please. First reading bill number 5672 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Brentwood, Missouri, granting approval of the site development plan for an outdoor smoker at Deerberg's Market in Brentwood Point, providing for the enforcement of this ordinance and establishing the effective date of this ordinance. Okay. Synopsis, please. Uh, yes, Your Honor. This smoker bill, 5672, is one that would uh, allow for an ordinance approving the site plan for an outdoor smoker at Deerberg's Market in Brentwood Point. Placement of the smoker unit is in front of the Deerberg store, which would lead to two accessible parking spaces and their relocation. The parking spaces will now be closest to the east store entrance, 
one of the accessible parking spaces will now be van accessible as required by state statute. With the loss of the two parking spaces, the site still has excess parking per the 25% parking reduction authorized in Ordinance 4241, which was approved by the Board of Aldermen in 2010. This item was forwarded to the Board of Aldermen by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Thank you. Are there any questions? The applicant is here this evening, if anybody had any questions. Alderman Lay. If I may, Your Honor. The location of the potential smoker as it relates to the automobiles that are parking next to these, this facility, what is the potential residue from the smoker affecting the cars that are sitting there? Uh, yes, I'm John Konsky with Deerbergs. And, Good evening, uh, John. I am. Um, as relates to uh, any kind of residual, we actually had these this same smoker in uh, operation in about 11 different locations now, and we've not had any problems at all. Um, actually, one of the planning and zoning people went and got an opportunity to see it in action, and, and uh, I don't wish to speak for him, but essentially he saw that that was uh, of little or no smoke that comes out of these particular units. They're um, specially manufactured for us, and uh, they're not the old style things where you used to see smokers that were old oil drums and things like that. You'll see in the photos, it's a stainless steel unit and uh, it it's contains uh, the smoke very good to help the flavoring and, uh, and the cooking of the meat, so. Second question, Absolutely. Your Honor. thank you. John, St. Louis County has its health permits and stuff because we are dealing with a food product and washing stations is the issue that I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. Is this facility that's going to be built in in the spots will it have a self-contained washing station and stuff so that st louis county won't have any issues that's correct with the facility we've been under uh, st louis county and other jurisdictions that we've been approved and they do have a like a portable wash station that you'll see that's posted out there to comply with their their regulations thank you sir okay. thank you any other questions other women Sanders. Uh, this might have happened in planning and zoning but uh, just out of curiosity i, I never even realized there was a smoke study but um, yeah. do you ask like do you ever get complaints from the other tenants around there I mean does that like did they fill out a form during that smoke study as far as like oh it smelled delicious and I wanted to go in and buy a lot or <laughs> well that's actually the trick <laughs> we, we, we actually do it there so that when people do walk by to go into the store they are enticed to to um, buy them by the at your other locations works. the tenants right the we've tenants. not had any problems to date and uh, the smoke study was done on behalf of the city of De Pere requested that we have a professional spoke study done. So they went to, they didn't have one in operation, of course, in De Pere, so they went to one in uh, Chesterfield that we had operating, and they did various um, smoke sampling in a circular radius around it at various uh, distances to see if there could be any disturbance with, say, adjoining neighborhoods or things of that nature. And what it found out you see in there is that it complies fully with all the Missouri odor control uh, uh, thing and so forth and it really dissipates pretty quickly because it's uh, it's really almost not noticeable until you're walking right past it so well I'm excited I don't have to go all the way out to the smokehouse so. good it's, <laughs> and it's wonderful product I really like it it's good wow. good uh, Alderman Wynn how much of the year will you be open I didn't see them yeah. we be open year round we do intend to um, run this year round and we did last year and we found it to still be successful over the winter time uh, due to the amount of investment, because we invest both in the smoker unit and putting it in place, we also put a new case inside um, and have to re um, decorate a little bit inside. And we actually add a person uh, is employed to help in this program too. So basically, our investment's very uh, high, and so that's why we opted to go year-round with these smokers, and it's been proven to be successful. You provide overcoats for the yeah, work poor work. guys. Yeah, exactly. So. Okay. Very good. Alderman Kramer. Yes, Your Honor. A couple of questions have already been answered. I just wanted to follow up that I, I had visited one of your other sites, and the aroma, when you do catch wind of it, is quite persuasive. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as far as the, the Deerbergs used to have a contractual arrangement with, I guess it was Super Smokers. Is that uh, right? In this particular case, there would be no subcontracting. It would be entirely Deerbergs product? Uh, that's correct. It's okay. all uh, Deerbergs product. And you're correct that we did have Super Smokers at one time. And then I think there was another barbecue purveyor at one point. But at any rate, we um, uh, this is all our employees, all our meats, and our um, recipes and so forth. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Your Honor. All the woman signers. Thank you. One more follow up. Just is there any liability for after hours somebody getting burnt or something? I mean, it, is that even an issue? I don't know whether it's hot or if it's right. Actually, these units are really well insulated, and and you can literally while it's burning put your hand on okay. it, and it and it's well insulated. Also, this has a safety uh, feature to it too. If the temperature gets too high, it has an automatic shutoff. And then finally, it's really not running when we're not there, so it's shut down. We also have it padlocked. We also have security cameras in the in the parking lot. And so, um, good question, but we've kind of uh, already addressed that. And that's why we put a fence around. It's decorative, but just to keep people away. But there's really, even if they get back there, there's really nothing they can get to. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks, John. Okay. Second reading, please. Second reading, Bill number 5672 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Brentwood, Missouri, granting approval of the site development plan for an outdoor smoker at Deerberg's Market in Brentwood Point, providing for the enforcement of this ordinance and establishing the effective date of this ordinance. Okay, any other questions? Motion, please. Your Honor, move for adoption. Second. Second. Motion is made by Alderman Robertson, second by Alderman Wynn to perfect Bill number 5672 into ordinance form. Roll call, please. Alderman Saunders? Yes. Alderman <coughs> Manister? Yes. Alderman Leahy? Yes. Alderman Tui? Yes. Alderman Kramer? Yes. Alderman Robertson? Yes. Alderman Wynn? Yes. Alderman Harper? Yes. Bill number 5672 is now ordinance number 4348. Thank you. First re reading of Bill number 5673. First reading Bill number 5673 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Brentwood, Missouri, granting approval of a signage plan at 2235 South Brentwood Boulevard, providing for the enforcement of this ordinance and establishing the effective date of this ordinance. Synopsis, please. Your Honor, Bill 5673 is for a bill that would cover an ordinance approving a site plan at 2325 South Brentwood Boulevard for signage package this property, for those who may not be aware, is formerly the location of Rug World, and it has been vacant for quite some time. The applicant is also requesting approval for a signage plan, including a maintenance and maintaining both the existing uh, the ground signs along Brentwood Boulevard. The item was forwarded to the Board of Aldermen by the Planning and Zoning Commission with a positive recommendation. Okay. Any questions? Alderman Kramer. Your Honor, do we have any proposed tenants for that site? I think they do, yes. Oh, that's wonderful. It's a photography studio. <laughs> it will take half the space. It's called um, Feller Photography. So Great. they'll use one of the ground signs and then take half of the um, building space. Great. Okay. Thank Any you. Other women signers? And this is just a, a rookie question, but. Um, are we, do we always just approve the signage plan? Is this how we're doing it? Or is it because this particular plan is different than what the ordinance allows? I just don't understand. Different zoning districts have different. PD. The PD, they have to have their, they have a sign, they can present a signage package that we can approve or disapprove. So, so Ellen. Okay. So. Sure, in, in the plan development district or the um, urban development district, they can, um, um, property owners can apply for a signage plan that that is comprehensive and covers the whole property. So if, if they have a sign plan, then they don't have to comply with the sign code regulations. The sign code regulations are pretty restrictive for multi-tenant um, properties. So our shopping centers all have signage plans where they have the larger signs. So this is, so this is, this. And we have to approve the signage plan then. Yes, the signage plan has to be. type of development, PD yes. and, you, thank you. That's correct, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Okay, no, that's right. And, Your Honor, this oh, will allow the landlord or the owner to pursue tenants with knowledge of the signage package available so that the tenants will have that covered. Right. Okay. Thank you. Second reading, please. Second reading, Bill number 5673 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Brentwood, Missouri, granting approval of a signage plan at 2235 South Brentwood Boulevard, providing for the enforcement of this ordinance and establishing the effective date of this ordinance. Okay. Motion, please. Motion to approve as submitted Bill 5673. Four. Four. Second. I'm sorry, you're right. Okay. And motion is made by Alderman Kramer, second by Alderman Saunders to perfect Bill number 5673 into ordinance form. Roll call, please. Alderman Saunders? Yes. Alderman Manister? Yes. Alderman Leahy? 
Yes. Ottoman Tui. Yes. Ottoman Kramer. Yes. Ottoman Robertson. Yes. Ottoman Wynn. Yes. Ottoman Harper. Yes. Bill number 5673 is now ordinance number 4349. Thank you. First reading bill number 5674. First reading bill number 5674 by title only, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement between the city of Brentwood, Missouri and Towers Fire Apparatus Company Inc. for structural firefighting turnout gear and providing for the effective date of this ordinance. Okay. Synopsis, please. Your Honor, Bill 5674 is one that would allow for an ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Brentwood to execute an agreement between the city of Brentwood and Towers Fire Apparatus Company Incorporated. That for structural fire, firefighting turnout gear, the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, recommends replacement of turnout gear for the frontline firefighters every five years. Last time the gears were replaced was approximately 20 years ago. The Public Safety Committee recommended approval of Towers Fire Apparatus Company Incorporated as preferred vendor, and the Board of Aldermen affirmed that recommendation at their April 2nd meeting. Okay. I believe Ways and Means looked at this also. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Oh, uh, Roman Sanders. I just want to know, is all the equipment up to date now? Have we replaced, is everything safe? <laughs> Still waiting on the ambulance. We're in the process of replacing the equipment, and for the most part, it is up to date. And uh, the firefighters do have new gear ordered and on the way, and uh, it's looking good right now. So okay. much more comfortable. I just, you know what I mean? If, if the standard is five years, I just feel like that their safety is important, and that's a standard that we should adhere to. And we should, I would feel comfortable if it was all replaced you know what I mean if it's at the five-year mark just because if anything were to happen I got I want to sleep at night <laughs> and I just uh, want to, to answer make your sure. question we'll, we will replace it every five years from here on out okay but, um, uh, but are and we almost will be the there stand. or can you Pardon? tell me we're there with the, this 13 puts us all everyone's got uh, we will be two or three people short and their gear is the gear that's still in the best shape so that's why we chose to leave them till next year um, as of next year we will have all the gear replaced uh, throughout the fire department and everybody will be in appropriate gear. And then uh, we will replace it on a five-year basis after that. Your Honor, your thoughts on the last two to three? I mean, should we wait or? I think they're, they're in good enough shape where we can wait until next year. It's okay. not a big issue right now. So okay. the ones that were in the most need, uh, those are the ones we're replacing. Okay. Thanks. I have a question on the beds. Um, um, Chewy. The Jefferson Fire, I think that's supposed to be a fire safety company, their bid was so much higher than everyone else's. Do we maybe not give them the specs correctly, or do they just completely offer a different product? I was just wondering about that. Um, they're not a local company. They heard through the grapevine that we were taking, we were soliciting bids, and they brought in a bid at the last minute that was outrageous. So. Okay, I was just wondering why it was so yeah. far in line with the others. Yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, I've never heard of them before, and they submitted a bid. And, it was considerably out of line. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Second reading, please. Second ring, bill number 5674 by title only, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement between the city of Brentwood, Missouri and Towers Fire Apparatus Company, Inc. for structural firefighting turnout gear and providing for the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. Motion, please. So move. Second. second. Motion is made by Alderman Wynn, second by Alderman Harper. Roll call, please. Alderman Saunders? Yes. Alderman Manister? Yes. Leahy? Yes. Alderman Tui? Yes. Alderman Kramer? Yes. Alderman Robertson? Yes. Alderman Wynn? Yes. Alderman Harper? Yes. Bill number 5674 is now ordinance number 4350. Thank you. First reading of bill number 5675. First reading bill number 5675 by title only, an ordinance of the city of Brentwood, Missouri, authorizing the city administrator to execute the attached 2012 community development block grant municipal housing and community development supplemental cooperation agreement. <coughs> Synopsis, please. Yes, Your Honor. This was the subject of our public hearing earlier. Bill number 5675 is a bill that would allow for an ordinance authorizing the city administrator, the city of Brentwood, to execute, uh, the, execute the attached 2012 Community Development Block Grant Municipal Housing and Community Development Supplemental Operation Agreement. 
city made application last year for the CDBG funds in the amount of $20,000 to be allocated towards the rehabilitation of private property. This program provides assistance to low and moderate income residents who are below 80% of the median area income. Provided in the form of forgivable loans, eligible citizens are access to those funds to abate residential housing deficiencies. When the city received notice last year, that the 2012 funds had been approved, we should have brought the agreement back to the Board of Aldermen at that time for approval. Any other questions? Second reading, please. Second reading, Bill number 5675 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Brentwood, Missouri, authorizing the City Administrator to execute the attached 2012 Community Development Block Grant Municipal Housing and Community Development Supplemental Cooperation Agreement. Thank you. Motion, please. So moved, Your Honor, to perfect Bill 5675 into ordinance form. And roll call. I'm sorry, and second? Second. Motion is made by Amalay, second by Alamatui to perfect bill number 5675 into ordinance form. Roll call, please. Alderman Saunders? Yes. Alderman Manister? Yes. Alderman Leahy? Yes. Alderman Tui? Yes. Alderman Kramer? Yes. Alderman Robertson? Yes. Alderman Wynn? Yes. Alderman Harper? Yes. Bill number 5675 is now ordinance number 4351. Thank you. Your Honor, can I ask yes. a question Alderman. on this, even though I suppose it is urgent? That's fine. I do it now. The question was just how do we advertise this program? Um, actually, it's on our website. Um, we put it in the, in the bulletin in our newsletter before. Um, actually, a couple times. I mean, throughout a year or so. We try to get the word out as easily as possible. I was wondering if, if code violations that would qualify for this, do, could we automatically, so that we do it as a, to all, oh, okay, good. So we're not making any judgment as to whether they can afford or not, but just so that they, in case they can't, they have that opportunity. Thank you. Because actually it's something you run into when we do approach some residents. We don't have the money to do that or whatever. So, yeah, that part, we've been doing that. So, thank you. Thank you. First ring of bill number 5676. First ring bill number 5676 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Brentwood, Missouri, approving a final subdivision plat of a parcel located at 2605 Mary Avenue into two single-family residential lots and establishing the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. Synopsis, please. Your Honor, this bill is for a simple subdivision for residential. Bill 5676 is for an ordinance approving a final subdivision plat, a parcel located at 2605 Mary Avenue, a parcel for a single family house into two single family residential lots and establishing the effective date of that ordinance. The item was forwarded to the Board of Aldermen by the Planning and Zoning Commission of Brentwood. PNZ recommends approval of the preliminary and the final plat for the subdivision. Any questions? I can tell you the neighbors are very much in favor of this. Mm -hmm. It's been a vacant house for probably about four or five years. Um, and so the plan is to sell the two lots, I believe, and, and build two new homes. So. I did have a question, and sorry. Will the, when they actually do the build then, does that go before the ARB? Yep. Okay, yeah. and, and, and one thing on there, is it possible that we give the notices in light of Miss? Ryan being here at several of the meetings, um, certified mail maybe to the neighbors or something so that we can assure that they got the delivery? They are mailed. Um, I, I don't know if we could go to the expense of the certified okay. mail, but sure. um, I know I got the, the notice for the, the actual plat subdivision, you know, um, so Alderman Lee. The notices are not required by ordinance to be mailed and at times staff has delivered. Handle, you're right. To work it through. Yeah. <coughs> For the ARB, they're not required to be um, sent U.S. mail. They're, we could hand deliver them. But in response to Ms. Ms. Ryan's comments and concerns, we are sending all ARB notices through the U.S. mail and not hand delivering. So, okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Second reading, please. Second reading, Bill number 5676 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Brentwood, Missouri, approving a final subdivision plan of a parcel located at 2605 Mary Avenue into two single family residential and establishing the effective date of this ordinance. Okay. Motion, please. Mo motion, Your Honor, to perfect 5676 into ordinance form, please. And second? Second. Motion is made by Alderman Lay, second by Alderman Saunders to perfect bill number 5676 into ordinance form. Roll call. Alderman Saunders? Yes. 
Alderman Manister? Yes. Alderman Leahy? Yes. Alderman Tui? Yes. Alderman Kramer? Yes. Alderman Robertson? Yes. Alderman Wynn? Yes. Alderman Har Harper? Yes. Bill number 5676 is now ordinance number 4352. Thank you. First reading of bill number 5677. First reading bill number 5677 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Brentwood, Missouri, granting approval of a site development plan of property numbered 8614 Manchester Road, which permits under the provisions of Chapter 25 of the Brentwood City Code the development of that site, providing the conditions of such development and providing for the effective date of this ordinance. Okay. Synopsis, please. Your Honor, Bill 5677 is for an ordinance granting approval of a site development plan at 8614 Manchester Road, which permits, under the provisions of Chapter 25 of the Brentwood City Code, the development of that site, providing the conditions of such development and providing for the effective date of the ordinance. At present, the property currently vacant is an existing office building in a commercial district zone with the intent to reuse that same office building for religious and congregational purposes. The applicant is proposing to renovate the building and site to accommodate church use. And I believe this has been reviewed by the Planning and Zoning Commission and is being forwarded to the Board of Aldermen at their request. Question, Your Honor. Um, lay. Um, upon permission of um, allowing the church to come into into being in this facility, does it change the tax status for this property? Mm -hmm. sure. They yeah. are purchasing the property. If they are a uh, nonprofit tax exempt, it would. And just so, for, so the public knows this building, this is the building. Um, on Manchester Road, right at the bottom of the hill, directly across from Dorothy Avenue. It used to be Geotech, Geotech. and before mm -hmm. that it was Stakeout, Stakeout, and before that it was a union office. Yes. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Have they fixed or addressed the flooding issues since they built up the dirt and parking lot behind Geotech? Well, Has anything been done? It depends in on which flooding issues. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, September, they certainly didn't uh, no. fix the flooding issues. But um, the general flooding, um, I mean, as best they can. Yeah. That building, the floor level, is actually about Two four feet. feet. Higher? Well, I'd say more like four, okay. four feet, I guess. About four steps, four or five steps. But it has flooded up in the building before, absolutely. So, Your Honor. Alderman Kramer. If I could ask our development director about the the topic of parking, I believe, came up originally with this applicant. And if you could give us the final arrival of sure. agreement. The applicant originally requested, um, again, they're, they're a church use. They have a small congregation currently. They, they um, intend or hope to, to grow. But they do understand, as staff has told them, that they are limited um, based for occupancy based on um, the number of parking spaces they can provide either on or off site. Um, our parking requirements for an assembly use are based on occupancy. So the applicant agreed to, at this point, limit their occupancy to 70. And that, what, based on our parking calculations, would um, mean that there are 28 parking spaces that are required, and they are providing all of those on site. If they grow in the future, they know that they can look to their neighbors within 300 feet to provide um, parking off-site if it meets the approval of city attorney and the board of aldermen, which would mean a, a long-term lease or some sort of agreement like that. Thank you. Uh, okay. Alderman Wynn. What we lose in taxes, we may more than make up in prayer. So <laughs> just remember that. Amen. All our women signers. Yep. And how is there some way of determining? Do you know what I mean? Is there some ordinance or guide or something? where we decide how much tax exempt or commercial. They just, no, they just tax free. Um, can I address that? Under Please. Yet another? Uh, well, no, all right, I'll no, do that. I mean, there, I, there's, there's um, a general public sentiment right now. There, there are organizations, um, you know, large church organizations that are buying property. Um, and, and I will use, for instance, um, Lutheran Family Services purchased a very large building in Hanley Industrial Court. Um, and um, uh, they voluntarily pay their property taxes on that building, okay? Um, because churches have um, um, been under attack, maybe, or have been uh, put under a magnifying glass by the federal government. And so instead of trying to fight those battles, they, they with that one, because it's strictly an office use for them, they have opted to pay their uh, property taxes on that site. But generally speaking, I think you would find that if you um, um, 
you know, tried to enforce an ordinance like that, you would find a, a real battle from a church and state standpoint. Yeah, I'm just saying, I, just I mean, that, right, that, that would be the, this, you know, um, we've run into problems before where churches have wanted to buy residential houses that, that adjoin them. Um, and the neighbors didn't like those kinds of things because they're afraid that future they would take down those houses to expand their parking lots and those kinds of things. And, and really, we haven't been, we have no way of stopping them from doing that, you know, so, um, you know, so, um, you kind of run into that church and state and, and the rights of those churches run under a couple different fronts. Alderman Leahy? If I may, Alan, I'll direct the question to you. Yes, we're looking forward towards bringing them into the community, but in this permit request, there is no residence occupancy to the facility as a permanent living station, or is there? Thank you. Any other questions? Business permit's not required or is required. Do they have a, well, they have an occupancy permit. Do they have a business license for a church? I don't know if we require a business license for a church. We certainly would require a fee, um, but they are required to have a commercial occupancy permit. They, they'll, once, if the site plan approval, if the site plan is approved, they would still need to be working with our building official and, um, to ensure that all the necessary improvements are made inside. So they're, they haven't submitted um, plans to us yet. So they're not, they haven't even applied for occupancy at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, second reading, please. Second reading, bill number 5677 by title only, an ordinance of the city of Brentwood, Missouri, granting approval of a site development plan and property numbered 8614 Manchester Road, which permits under the provisions of chapter 25 of the Brentwood City Code, the development of that site providing the conditions of such development and providing for the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. Motion, please. Your Honor, I'd like to make the motion to approve or Bill 5677 into ordinance form, please. I'll second that. Motion is made by Alderman Lay, second by Alderman Wynn. Roll call, please. Alderman Saunders? Yes. Alderman Manister? Yes. Alderman Leahy? Yes. Alderman Tooley? Yes. Alderman Kramer? Yes. Ottoman Robertson? Yes. Ottoman Wynn? Yes. Ottoman Harper? Yes. Thank you. Bill number 5677 is now ordinance number 4353. And actually, um, just a, uh, one other item. I, I believe that this is the church that was being relocated because of the, uh, the uh, Rock Hill Presbyterian Church that was removed. And they were actually had oh. held their services there. So. Um, bill number 56, first reading of bill number 5678, please. First reading bill number 5678 by title only, an ordinance amending the revised code of ordinances of the city of Brentwood prohibiting left turns out to Eager Road from the Drury Inn and Suites site between certain hours of the day, providing for the current maintenance of this code, providing for the effective date of this ordinance, and providing for the repeal of all conflicting ordinances. Thank you. Synopsis, please. Yes, Your Honor, this is in addition to previous legislation and public comment that we had. Bill 5678 is one that talks about an ordinance amending revised code of ordinances for the city of Brentwood prohibiting left turns out to Eager Road from the Drury Inn and Suites development between certain hours of the day. I believe it's 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. St. Louis County Department of Highways and Traffic has approved a full access drive on Eager Road for the Drury development site with the condition that no left turns be allowed between 4 and 6. Any person in violation of this ordinance shall be subject to a fine of $250 per occurrence plus court costs. Okay. Um, actually, um, uh, this came out of, as you remember, we approved the jury project back in March. Um, since that time, uh, uh, the city and the developer has had four meetings with St. Louis County Highway. Um, starting out with, um, they said that their traffic analysis first indicated that they wanted to um, restrict the access on Agnes and the new entrance on Eagle Road to right in and right out only. So that's kind of the way the meeting started. Um, in, in, in essence, that would have condemned the property. No, no business can operate without having access to the site. Um, and so um, through negotiations, um, uh, the developer actually did their own traffic analysis from another traffic engineering firm uh, out of Florida. They did computer models uh, 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 showing how the traffic would work and, and, the, and so forth. It was very in-depth. Um, finally, at our last meeting two weeks ago, 
uh, Drury said, you know, um, they came up with the idea of restricting, because that was the, the main problem area, was that four to six period, uh, Monday through Friday, that they would um, agree to restricting that left term during that period. Um, and so, um, again, with the help of, of um, uh, staff um, and also um, uh, St. Louis County, uh, uh, we were able to get um, uh, an agreement that would enter into that restriction. Uh, the goal is still, Drury, uh, with this, uh, they would hope to uh, close on the property uh, no later than the end of June and still hope to be under uh, construction within a few months. So. Um, you know, this is the last thing they needed to ensure that they had access to that property. Um, I will say that it was very frustrating in that St. Louis County was willing to give, or is still going to leave, full access on Agnes, and yet they said that they were going to restrict at, uh, at, um, uh, the entrance on Eager Road. And um, um, it just, it, there's no way that site would work with that. Um, um, and I won't go into it in depth, but um, you know, the, the ability to try to make a left turn out of Agnes Avenue any time of the day is, is almost ridiculous mm -hmm. to go south on Bravo Boulevard. Um, so uh, we had got this agreement. Um, I think it'll work, and um, hopefully it'll give Drury everything they need to close on the property and get started on their project. So Alderman Lee, or I'm sorry, Alderman Harper. Uh, the ordinance doesn't specify that it's Monday through Friday, but the drawings do. It should. It, it just it says four to six. six. Exactly. Yes. We need to make that amendment to the ordinance. Well, your signage that he's using on the reference map gives you the Monday through Friday with no reference to Saturday and Sunday. Right, and that's what it should be. It should just be Monday through Friday. So the Is that what George Ellen, did George say that to you or not? It's Monday through Friday is what we talked to us in St. Louis County. Okay. That's what the exhibit shows. Mm -hmm. Right, but that's not what we have in the ordinance. Mm -hmm. So could we make an amendment to the ordinance? Let me yeah. see here. Mr. Herper. Okay. Very good catch. What did you ask me? I'm sorry. Make the huh? Oh, I make a motion that we make the amendment to the ordinance to specify Monday through Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Thank you. I'll second that, Your Honor. Okay, this is for the amendment only. Roll call, please. Alderman Saunders? Yes. Alderman Manister? Yes. Alderman Leahy? No. Alderman Tui? Yes. Alderman Kramer? Yes. Alderman Robertson? Yes. Alderman Nguyen? Yes. Alderman Harper? Yes. Thank you. We were just voting on the amendment, correct? Yeah, that was just the yeah. amendment. Okay, I wanted to make sure. Ellen, um, do you by chance have George's cell phone number or Larry Hasselfeld's cell phone number? Do you think you could maybe try to clarify them before we vote on this? Because when I talked last to St. Louis County, it was Monday through Friday, but I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Is that a phone? <laughs> I love it. Okay. Alderman Kramer. Yes, Your Honor. While we're waiting, uh, a couple more questions if I could. Sure. On the exhibit, uh, would appear as though the Eager Road portion or the or the northernmost portion of the development still shows the existing curb cuts. Is that how it is? I I thought it was going to be, unless I'm seeing it wrong, I've got that curb cut and I've got this curb cut back here. That sign's just in front of these. There's parking there now. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, all the, just as clarification for um, a good point, but um, uh, there, will, there are two curb cuts on Eager Road now. There will only be one, and it will be shifted as close to the creek as possible in order to make that work. So, is there another question? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Alderman Lee. Thank you, Your Honor. The question I have is in the discussions with St. Louis County. There are part of this development agreement that is on the east side of the creek. Was there any discussion of making an access across the creek and tying into the Target. east side promenade and making an access in and out there? Um, yes, that was one of the discussions. Um, uh, there was also another dis um, option that was proposed that, um, uh, first of all, that was too costly uh, because of uh, DDR, who owns the promenade. Um, uh, was very difficult to work with on that option. 
Another one that we looked at was actually to try to move the, the entrance, or what their proposal was, to try to move it actually over the creek, to move it a, a little <laughs> bit more center between the two stop signs. Um, and they were willing to take on that additional um, uh, uh, cost. They hadn't, didn't know how much it would be, but um, again, ultimately, this was the one that became the most economical. St. Louis County, I will tell you, also suggested that we, um, uh, when, Rose, when it was pointed out that Rose Avenue was not an option, uh, they wanted the extension put through to Rose Avenue and the traffic analysis said that that wasn't an option um, because there's enough room between the buildings to put in the, uh, enough lanes for left turn lanes and right turn lanes and those kinds of things. Um, they suggested that we redevelop the entire area and take down the Joseph H. White building. Um, so, uh, I mean, these are the kind of uh, conversations and debates we got into with St. Louis County Highway. Now they want to redevelop all of St. or all of Brentwood. But um, you know, um, ultimately we came up with, with the solution for the site. So. The jury is then not going to look at the other portion of the redevelopment area that was outside the construction area. You're saying that they're not going to entertain using those parcels there. Right. Thank you, Your Honor. Right. This is the site plan that's been approved and nothing else. The redevelopment agreement right. is different than the site plan agreement. Well, Drury has made it known to the city that if, if we wanted that access to go back or to go to Rose Avenue, that would have to be something that the city would have to do that they could not afford to do that. Your Honor. So, Alderman Kramer. Uh, going back to uh, the point before on the access on Eager Road, uh, the second question I was going to bring up was, do the drivers who are headed westbound on Eager, will they have that dedicated left turn? Yes, they will. Okay. M make sure everybody understands that. Yeah. That's there, there will be a left from, again, if you're heading towards Brentwood Square, there will be a dedicated left turn lane for those customers. Yes. So as of right now, when you're coming off 170 and you're headed towards Brentwood Boulevard, there are three different ways to go onto Brentwood Boulevard. One of those, the far south lane will now be dedicated for ingress to yeah but way before that yes. way before yes. that yeah. there'll okay. still be three left turn lanes at brentwood okay yeah. but if i may your honor i'm in late you. but that will be an unsignaled right turn right so you'll yield to traffic yeah. right all the sanders i was wondering is it can i make a motion that we table this i i we've seen the, the new people on the board I wasn't anticipating this. It came in the packet, and we have done nothing with the jury, and I feel a little bit like I'm not quite prepared to vote. Is that is that troublesome? Um, I, I would not. I mean, really, this is the last piece that they need in order to close on their, I mean, to get their ducks in a row for closing on the property um, and putting those wheels in motion. Um, really, I mean, it, it, it's really only a left turn restriction. I, you know, so, um, um, you know, okay. I would prefer not to put it on hold. Um, I just want clarification, and I am 99, I am sure that it's Monday through Friday, but I just want to make sure before we uh, uh, pass the ordinance, so. Actually, what I could, if we could just, uh, we could move on and come back to this, and um, uh, if Alan's able to get hold of one of those two. Alderman Kramer. Your Honor, if I could just add in real quick, and I understand Alderwoman. Uh, um, Saunders. Saunders. Saunders' comments. Um, the, the one of the big, fears on some of the elected officials' parts, and others maybe not so big of a fear, was whether or not, as Alderman Leahy points out, we would have that signalized intersection. So this achieves what P&Z was also concerned about, some of the members, having the access without having the signal, without disrupting the traffic. And some of the people who decide they want to make that left turn may be a little bit uh, buy some extra life insurance or traffic <laughs> insurance, uh, but it's a way for it to solve the whole problem. Yeah, and, and again, I, I understand those concerns, um, uh, but I can assure you St. Louis County will not allow a signal there for anybody. So that was not an option. Um, it didn't matter who was paying for it. They just said that it's too close to the other intersections, and given the amount of traffic in there, they said there is, there is no way that that was an option. And so, um, and they were adamant about that. Um, so, okay. Let's go ahead with this because I am sure it's Monday through Friday. Um, and um, uh, we had the amendment. Did we have the second reading? Uh, I'm not sure we had a vote on the amendment yet. We oh, we did. Yes, okay, we did. I'm sorry. Yes. No, we have not had a second reading, Your Honor. As amended, please. 
Uh, second reading bill number 5678 as amended, an ordinance amending the revised code of ordinances of the city of Brentwood prohibiting left turns at the Eager Road from the Drury Inn and Suite site between certain hours of the day providing for the current maintenance of this code, providing the effective date of this ordinance and providing for the repeal of all conflicting ordinances. Thank you. Any other questions? Roll call, please. We need a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. First and second, please. I'll provide the motion, Your Honor. Thank you. And second? Second. Motion is made by Alderman Robertson, second by Alderman Tui. Roll call, mm -hmm. please. Alderman Saunders? No. Alderman Manister? Yes. Alderman Leahy? No. Alderman Tui? Yes. Alderman Kramer? Yes. Alderman Robertson? Yes. Alderman Wynn? Yes. Alderman Harper? Yes. Thank you. Bill number 5678 is now ordinance number 4354. Thank you. Next item, resolution 979. Resolution pro providing for the consumption of beer and wine and liquor for, uh, well, let's do the synopsis. How's that? Your Honor, resolution number 979. Every year, the Brentwood Parks and Recreation Department, along with West Community Credit Union, presents the Sounds of Summer Concert Series at our very own Brentwood Park. This year, the series will take place on June 1st, July 6th, and August 3rd from 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. As this park is usually designated alcohol-free, staff asks the Board of Aldermen to consider a resolution allowing residents and those with appreciation of the concert series to bring coolers with alcohol into the park on these three evenings only. This special use permit application would have been presented to the Public Works Committee if they had met in May. In the past, this would have been approved as a special use permit only. However, to be consistent with other similar board action, such as the Veterans Day celebration at City Hall and the holiday party, staff recommends a resolution being given consideration for this event. Thank you. Any questions? I do. I'll yeah. win. At one time, I probably would have opposed this because I've opposed a lot of liquor bills, but we're already doing it. I mean, I go there in the same country, it's already there. We might legalize, so people are, we're not having to say, why don't you keep the laws? So in this case, I think it would go far. But I, I am concerned that we continue to broaden the places and the opportunities to drink, and yet we still have a problem with our nation and many people who can't deal with it properly. So I just want to make my point of view. I appreciate that. You've always been very consistent. I so. appreciate it, too. Thank you. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to adopt uh, resolution 979, please? So moved, Your Honor. In second? Second. Motion is made by Alderman Lay, second by Alderman Tui. Roll call, please. Alderman Saunders? Yes. Alderman Manister? Yes. Alderman Leahy? Yes. Alderman Tui? Yes. Alderman Kramer? Yes. Alderman Robertson? Yes. Alderman Wynn? Yes. Alderman Harper? No. Thank you. Next item, accounts against the city. Alman Kramer, this is great. You can just take it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Your Honor, this is a wonderful thing because I have been able to review and or opportunity for questions prior to the meeting. Uh, this is a warrant list for the 5-21-2012 Board of Alderman meeting in the amount of $17,442.95 presented on behalf of the Ways and Means Committee and Chairman for the review and approval of the Board of Aldermen. Your okay. Honor, if I may. Alderman Lee. Could we get copies of the warrant list, please, distributed to us? Oh, yeah. sure. Do you want to look real quick? I did not get one. I I get one. We're missing I three copies. Either. Four copies. Here's, no Here's some more. We're good. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Hold the phone. We took them all. <laughs> <laughs> Did I else need one? Thank you. Wait, Jerry. There's a couple different times. There it is. Did you get enough, Andy? We're we still, we're, if you have one Here more, we got please. We got, one. we got a guy printing them in the back. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, sir. Your Honor? Yes. It would be important to note uh, on this uh, warrant list as uh, in comparison to others, there are a number of items which come from a specific <coughs> budget. However, the Gillimore and Bell invoice, for example, which is a Brentwood Eager Road development topic, is a, uh, is a pass-through item, so that would not come from a specific budget. Right. Okay. 
Any questions? Are we okay to? Still reading. Forgive okay. me to, uh, for catching up. Alderman, uh, I'm sorry, Alderman. Oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Saunders. Saunders. I'm sorry. Alderman Kramer, did that mean when you say pass through, the developer pays it? We is it a facility? I'm not sure. It's paid out of the TDD. Out account, of TDD. Right? Okay, thank you. We send it to the. Um, uh, we pay for it, but then we reimburse from the uh, trustees. Reimbursed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Everybody okay? Do we have a motion, please? Motion to approve as submitted, Your Honor. And second? Second. Motion is made by Alman Kramer, second by Alman Wynn to approve the warrant list as submitted. Can we do an acclamation? Is that okay? Or do you want roll call? Roll call. Alderman Saunders? Yes. Alderman Manister? Is there still a question? I mean, you can go. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, under the Kelly Woodworking Company, two command cabinets for back of the fire chief and assistant fire chief vehicles, um, are those going into current vehicles or are those were those for new vehicles? Those are for the current vehicles, okay. the chief and the assistant chief. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. And we saved money on those. Pardon? We saved money on that. Yeah, to go out and buy those on the market would cost about another two thousand dollars, and uh, Kelly was more than happy to do it, and they did a great job. No relation. Sense of humor. I'm sorry. Uh, and we are on roll call. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have stopped. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Ottoman Leahy. Yes. Ottoman Tuli. Yes. Ottoman Kramer. Yes. Ottoman Robertson. Yes. Ottoman Wynn. Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. Your Honor. Yes, Alderman Kramer. If I could add just a point of order clarification for some of the uh, newer aldermen, there are may be occasion where you come across a piece of legislation or an item that you were not able to be part of the discussion or for whatever reason haven't been exposed to or are not comfortable with. You always retain the option to abstain from the voting or you can vote no or you can vote yes. So abstain is an option and it has been often been used in the past. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Good point. Mm -hmm. Next item, reports of committee and department heads. Um, as I mentioned last meeting um, under the mayor's report, I would like to have at least a, a, a few minute discussion on the rec center uh, so that we can get some more direction. But before that, I have, have one other uh, or two other housekeeping items. Um, in, a, in reminder, if anybody would like to attend, I don't know if people have already contacted Octavia, but the uh, Municipal League um, uh, annual dinner next Thursday evening, the 31st. Um, and um, uh, please let her know. I think it would be uh, worthwhile being there. Um, I can tell you that uh, we are in the running for a um, award from the Municipal League. So. Um, maybe they'll entice some other people to come. But anyway, um, the other item is uh, our next, uh, we do go to our summer schedule next month, um, and um, I already have a conflict with our June, and I was going to ask if, for a motion to reschedule our June 18th meeting to June 11th. Um, I would like to do two things at that meeting. Well, one, I'd like to have the meeting, because I will be out of town on the 18th, and so will the city administrator uh, the following week. Um, and um, uh, I would also like to schedule that meeting um, at 6 o'clock um, and the first hour of that meeting we would use to totally de de dedicate to the rec center discussion. Um, so then we would uh, open the meeting with the rec center discussion and then uh, at 7 o'clock, wherever we are at that point, we would move into our regular meeting. Um, so, um, uh, again, uh, I, I know it's a, a change, but I would look for a motion to change the regular meeting to June 11th at 6, 6 p.m. here at City Hall. I would, you want motion? Please. I would be glad, to, as a pro tem, I would be glad to have you there at the meeting. So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I vote for that change. I'll I, I motion for that change. Yeah, okay. And that is a Monday, too. Is that it correct? is a Monday. It's a Monday before. When? Um, can we a second? We normally, second? Okay, thank second. you. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. When do we normally meet in the summer? I didn't know. Well, it's the third Monday. Third Monday. Third Monday it, we only. skip our first meeting. Okay. Just one um, meeting I, a month. The only reason I, you know, again, I, I don't right. want to move it back was is only because we're both gone the entire week and 
uh, Bola is to get the packet out and those kinds of things, so it'll be difficult to do when she's gone. So, um, and uh, so, anyway. Um, roll call, please. I just want to add on that. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Alderman Tui. I definitely couldn't be there by 6, but I think I have a scheduling conflict okay. on that night. So. Okay, sorry. All right. You could come later. Come when you can. I need to check. Okay. <laughs> just don't speed. Just don't speed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how I get to the meeting. Oh, all right. <laughs> say no more. No, say no more. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Alderman Saunders? Yes. Alderman Manister? Yes. Alderman Leahy? Yes. Alderman Tui? No. Alderman Kramer? Yes. Alderman Robertson? Yes. Alderman Wynn? Absolutely. Alderman yes. Harper? Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much uh, for accommodating me. Um, the next item, uh, again, the rec center. Um, and um, I, I think the board was able to get uh, the information, the, the new members. Um, it is a lot to digest. We've been talking about this for a long time. Um, I, I think um, uh, one of the things that we've gotten caught into, um, you know, we, we've done surveys, plural. We've um, uh, had committees. We've discussed a number of different options. Um, and I think what it, it comes down to is, is the board really needs to finally make some decisions in order to give staff direction on where we want to go. And um, um, I think um, what I would like to do is, is limit this discussion today until 20 minutes to 9 um, so that we have a cutoff time. But I think the, the overriding question that we have to answer before we can move forward at all with respect to the rec center is do we want to keep the ice rink? And um, uh, because we know that within you know, the next few years, uh, by 2020, we need to upgrade the Freon system. Um, uh, we know that the building needs a new roof. Uh, we know that um, we need to bring it up to code with respect to our fire code uh, suppression system, which is there is not none in that building. Um, so there are some general maintenance things. That's what started the whole thing um, in evaluating the rec center. And so I think um, uh, if we make that distinction, then we can move on to the next question about the, the meeting rooms and expansion and those kinds of things. But I think the overriding question that we need to answer in the, the, what I want discussion on tonight is whether we should keep the ice rink and move forward with that. So, Alderman Robertson. Uh, Your Honor, <coughs> excuse me, as Chairman of Public Works and the uh, former main proponent of taking out the ice, I just wanted to uh, tell you that we, at the Public Works Committee last year, we did uh, agree that we should keep the ice in addition to expanding the rec center's uses renovating the uses of the uh, parts of the building and increasing its visibility from the street uh, you know to approach the public more because a lot of people drive by have no idea we have a rec center right. and, and again I, I understand that but I think what, what we need to do as a board because then what happens is we try to move in that direction and then we get well you know what if this happens so I think we need to we need to vote on that and say that's what we're doing in order to get to that Absolutely. next level and so that's why I wanted to have that discuss discussion and, and make that. Um, uh, Alderman Leahy. I'll, I'll differ with Alderman Robertson's interpretation of the Public Works Committee's right. findings. We entertained different options, but that committee came to no consensus as to maintaining keeping the ice or not. We even played with some different figures. This board last entertained whether or not we would hire additional engineering services to evaluate proper costing for potentials to change the rec center. I raised the issue at the board level asking that the board not move forward to consider both the rec center and this city hall building and to determine which may better suit going forward. Now, I understand, Your Honor, if I may question you, and you and I have not had a chance to t discuss this privately, but I have heard rumors that there has been discussions with the city of Brentwood and a commercial entity about potentially utilizing this site for something else, which I find rather disturbing since this board has made no decision I'm curious how we move in that direction without the board's knowledge or discussion on it. So I'm still, yes, we need to do something with the rec center, but according to the surveys that we did and the parks department's own numbers, 
you're getting a 12% usage rate from the citizens of Brentwood, but you subsidize that rec center facility by a tune of almost $600,000 a year. The city of Clayton is having a meeting, I believe, this Thursday to discuss what they potentially may or may not do with their skating center in the Shaw Park complex. I think that we ought to discuss what our options are with the two properties and that type of way going forward uh, before we decide how to proceed on, a, on an avenue. Right, and, and um, uh, I agree, and that's why we need to make a decision what direction we're gonna go, because this is a circle we get into. Mm -hmm. uh, with respect to this property, um, I wouldn't say that there were discussions of, of this property with commercial developers. Um, uh, I have said publicly on a couple of different occasions um, that um, CVS Pharmacy was looking at, actually, uh, this goes back as long as two years ago, is right when we started construction of the firehouse. Uh, they uh, met with me and were interested in the congregational church property um, and also the property behind it. And I told them, well, we're just starting construction of a new firehouse. I doubt <laughs> that you're going to be able to purchase that property. Um, they also were looking at um, the corner of White Avenue and Brentwood Boulevard, the northwest corner. And uh, uh, I said to them, um, uh, it, you know, if you would be willing, we would at least off, uh, see what you would offer us for our site here because we were talking about the cost of renovating this building at the time. Um, I have sent them an email just to get some idea. Um, again, the discussions from the rec center where that maybe we could move City Hall over there, do a, 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 actually a $16,000 addition, a 16,000 square foot addition to that building um, and move City Hall over there. Uh, that's as far as those discussions went. Uh, we never heard back from CVS. Um, I, you know, again, um, just so the public knows where I stand, I, I think there's a, a lot of sentiment and uh, sentimental feelings towards our building here. Um, which I am very strong, uh, have very strong feelings about. Um, I would not like to see um, uh, us sell this property, but I think we had to at least ask that question um, <clears throat> and so that we had that evaluation in our, in our making. Um, but um, uh, as far as uh, the, um, this building, um, it's going to be costly to renovate at whatever time we do that, um, but I think that it is something the city needs to preserve. Um, and I'm also, again, you know, my, if I were to vote, if it's a 4-4 tie, um, <laughs> I'm very much in favor of keeping the ice rink. Um, I think we have a, a great relationship and, and we offer our residents with our, our agreement with Richmond Heights and Maplewood, uh, we offer our residents as much or more than any community in St. Louis County at a very reasonable price. Um, and, um, um, you know, I think cities need to look to those kinds of things uh, moving forward. Um, that's the only reason or the only way that we're going to be able we can't keep raising taxes and redeveloping and those kinds of things as we go forward. Um, we need to look at ways of saving money um, and making sure that we have the funds to provide services to our residents. And I think recreation is one of those services that we need to help provide. You don't make money on everything, um, <laughs> but um, um, you know, that's why you don't see a lot of private ice rinks and private baseball fields and, and those kinds of things, because those are the things that cities provide. So um, that's my take, and I'll open it up to, to other questions so or comments. So. I, I just wanted to say that we did vote as a committee at, to approve sending it okay. to the Board of Aldermen with and a I, plan to keep the ice rink and expand the uses of the rec center. Okay. So we're on the same page there. I, that's why I wanted to do it here. <laughs> So, Mr. Robertson, I'm sorry, I don't recall that that action to tell you the truth, and I don't think the minutes to your to the Public Works Committee will reflect that. Oh, well, they will. Well, there, there was that's, a three-one vote. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and again, I think you know yeah, that's we're why the one saying no, I believe. And again, our committees are subcommittees and their advisory committees to the Board of Aldermen. That's why I wanted to have this discussion and make that decision here so that we all know which direction we're going. Correct. Alderman Kramer. Yes, Your Honor. I have a, a couple of comments. One will be shorter than the other. Um, the first one is going back to the topic of that meeting. One of the things that we also talked about was that we were going to seek a conceptual drawing of what it would look like from an engineering firm if we were to square off the existing building, also keeping the ice rink, also keeping the other facilities, 
but adding possibly workout and multi-purpose and meeting room. Mm -hmm. um, so there, the component that I thought we were waiting for as far as that vote was uh, getting the actual uh, conceptual drawing of what that concept would look like. But going back to uh, the initial study of this topic, uh, I have my handwritten minutes from May 9th, 2007, <laughs> which is the very first meeting we had on this topic officially, the rec center work session. And we came up with a mission statement at that time, five years ago. And the mission statement, which I'll, I'll just give part of it to you, speaks a little bit to some of the uh, decisions that we came up with early on. And that was in recognition of resident input to the city's 2006 comprehensive plan, and the 2002 Brentwood Parks and Recreation Needs Assessment Study regarding our existing recreation center, the Brentwood Board of Aldermen have undertaken a focused study and further request for residential and community input regarding the recreation center needs of our community. And then it goes on to talk about it's getting expensive as we're currently running and it's only gotten more expensive. The reason why I bring this up is the the data that we were given and the, the polling that was done for both the comprehensive plan and the needs assessment study pointed to different things in terms of what the residents wanted and what the residents were using. And it seemed to me as though we had a disparity between what the residents wanted, which was they wanted a swimming pool, they wanted workout facility, they wanted meeting rooms, they wanted fitness, um, and the use of the facility that we have, which is the ice skating rink, and how many of our own Brentwood residents were actually using that. And that was a very divisive and polarizing topic at the time was just how many, and a lot of people disagreed on what the number was, just how many of our own residents actually use it versus coming in from the outside. And I do see the value of Brentwood's ice rink as attracting those from outside the community uh, as, a, uh, uh, as many things, including a public relations uh, uh, plus for the community. However, and, this, and I respect everyone else's viewpoint, my own personal one is uh, that we have to take the data that comes in from the polling of our residents and mix that with the common sense that I believe the residents have elected us to put into effect. And for example, the, uh, the study that was done for the recreation center as regarding the comprehensive plan showed that the residents would like to have a swimming pool. Well, as anyone who owns a home with a swimming pool, they're extremely expensive to run, to operate, to staff, and to insure. And what we really had with the comprehensive plan in some regards was a wish list. But what my memory is, what wasn't on the comprehensive plan wish list, and I have a copy of it, was an ice skating rink. We do have people who would like it, people who do use it, but the percentage of users from Brentwood only, I believe, was a very low, under 20% under to be safe, of usage was local. And I really see, going forward, more people who are coming to Brentwood, who are families who want to come here, or who families who don't want to leave Brentwood would like to have our very own workout portion. If there's a way to have a workout portion, which we have in the original vote, workout portion with meeting rooms and the ice rink, if there's, if there's a way to keep it and have a bond issue that was lower, I'm for that. But the ice rink, if that's the topic all by itself, personally, I think I may agree with Alderman Leahy in this regard, I think it costs the city way too much money. I don't think enough of our own residents use it. And I think the offset of getting the public relations benefit from it uh, is far inferior to the benefit that our residents would get to using a workout facility if it was one versus the other. Thank you. Good. And Alderman Tui. Well, uh, you know, the comments made by the mayor about um, a facility and that we provide services you don't really find from private institution, I would disagree with that about a workout facility. We have numerous gyms and alternatives people can use fairly reasonably priced, but I'm not so sure we already need to build another workout facility in a pretty heavy market. I mean, our residents can use the Heights. We have a club fitness in Brentwood. We have club fitness in Rock Hill. There are some private gyms as well along Brentwood. I can't remember the name of all of them. But I'm not so sure 
going into an industry that the private sector is already controlling to force a competition for them is the best alternative. So that's my thoughts on the workout facility. What about the ice rink? Well, I'm just <laughs> talking about the, um, as far as the ice rink goes, I'd like to study it more. I'm newer to this issue. You know, I know we talked about the $600,000 subsidy. What percentage of the total operating cost is that? Does anyone know? The, if I may, you're right. Well, actually, all the woman. Well, I just had a question. Man, you're referring sir, to the poll that was taken. How long ago was that taken? Two, one in the, the early Were the residents, yeah, yeah it was sent there out. There two, one in the early 2000s and then yeah. one in 2005. And how did that differ? No. Actually, the, little, actually the, the usage actually increased. From because the I, I remember several years ago, we didn't really use the rink hardly at all, and we got that poll. Now, as my kids have gotten older, we use it all the time. So I imagine that I'm not the only one who, within the several amount of years that it's been taken, mm -hmm. that the usage has probably changed, some more, some less. I was just curious. I didn't, I couldn't recall. I knew it was a while ago. I didn't know there was one that was also done two years ago. Uh, but I also agree with, there's, we have many workout facilities available to residents in Brentwood. And how would that affect our co-op co with the Heights? Because we have that usage there as well. To answer your question with respect to the, the over, all, overall percentage, um, I would say that I think that's one of the frustrating things through this process. At different times, we got different numbers. Um, and it's been, uh, so I, I can't quantify that number. Um, you know, but, um, um, you know, that's something we would have to get um, in order to, to give you an exact number. Exact Alderman number. Harper. I think another thing to consider is even if it's only 12% of the residents, uh, the, remain, the remainder of people coming from other communities are spending money in Brentwood. They may be shopping at Walgreens, they may go to OB Clark's, train wreck, or not train wreck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, they may go there too. But <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, that's right. Yeah, can we annex the train wreck? Uh, I mean, that's just another thing to consider uh, when we're looking at, you know, the ice skating rink. Right. Yeah, I, I think um, is one of the things that came out in the survey is that, you know, uh, well, when this was all under discussion in the past, I can tell you, you know, I was at my doctor's office, or a, a different doctor, a knee doctor out in West County, and the, the nurse said something about, you know, oh, you're with Brentwood, and I said yes, and she's like, you're not going to get rid of your ice rink. Yeah, I mean, it really, it does give a, a lot of recognition to our community because people from all over the area come, you know, know the Brentwood Ice Rink. Um, and, um, uh, and again, you know, that's why, you know, these discussions we're having, that's, that's what would happen at the committee is that they would get so broad that, you know, that's why I think, you know, the discussion needs to be made. Do we want to keep the ice rink? And then, yes, then what, what do we want to do on top of that? And that's why this is going to be a much, you know, it's not going to be decided tonight, but I think so the public knows and so we know the direction we're going to at our next meeting, you know, I would like, you know, to have a motion tonight whether we proceed with the option of, or with uh, keeping the ice rink and then evaluating what we want to do on top of it is, yep. is why I would like to do so. And I, I had another question about sure. the um, polling questions. Tui. Were people aware who decide or asked, do you want an ice rink or not? Were they aware of the financial cost? Were they given some sort of information? The reason I ask is, we went up to someone and said, hey, you want cake and ice cream? We'd all say yes. <laughs> You say you want a bigger gut rear end, the answer might change. <laughs> so I'm wondering, did they have any idea what the financial expense was? Yes, we do. We, we've got studies well, of that. Well, the did people they, who were polled, though, did they know? Well, they, no, no, no. Well, and the question of the ice rink really wasn't in the poll. There was a question, and again, that's why I think we need to take our input that we've had from our residents over this period of time. You know, um, I would contend the thing I didn't like about the survey was it asked if our residents wanted to have a swimming pool. It didn't ask them if they already knew that we had access to one, both outdoor and indoor. Or how much it would cost. Right, and how much it costs. So, I mean, you know, again, it depends on why polls are done and, and how those questions are asked. So, you know, I can tell you, you know, people that have confronted me, you know, overwhelmingly are people within the community, and I'm not just talking two or three people. Um, uh, well, my coffee with the mayor, you know, there's usually, you know, uh, 20 to 30 people there. Um, it is like in their older people from our community, they don't use the ice rink, but they are 100% in favor of keeping the ice rink. And part of their reason, I think, in talking to them was they helped build the original one. 
it was their, you know, they did that for their kids when they lived here in this community and, and approved the original bond issue to build that ice rink. And I think there's some sentimental aspect to it for them. So again, I, uh, you know, that's why we need to make a decision to move forward. So uh, Alderman Harper, or I'm sorry, Alderman Saunders. Alderman Wynn was before me, please. Oh, okay, Alderman Wynn. Well, I remember going uh, in, way back when I was on a committee and went to Kansas City, as a matter of fact, and looked at facilities before 08. And oh boy, everybody was building 18, 20 million dollar facilities and money was easy to get. And then it came back home, I was all for it. We're about ready to build whatever you want to build. And then there was a change in the economy. And I think that's another thing to consider when you think about building. But I would add one thing. As I stood there at Kansas University and their student facility, with my Missouri cap on, by the way, <laughs> uh, I looked at all those young people and they, they told me something I think kind of stuck in my mind. These are the folks you're going to have moving to your towns. They're used to good facilities. They've gone through a university and had student facilities. And when they come out and start looking where to live, they're going to want some nice facilities uh, to have in order to move in. So I think that's something to think about as we're doing this. That is, we do need to think of the next generation. And as they move into communities, we may need to think about that. OK, I agree. Other women, Sanders? Um, yes. When, um, I guess my husband served on that committee. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that may speak to our communication, because I don't know a whole lot that came out of that. <laughs> but um, um, I agree with the mayor in the fact that I didn't think that the survey was very well written as far as, you know, what, what and, and also with Alderman Tui saying, you don't want ice cream. It asked whatever you want. And I do agree that with the swimming pool and the other facilities for workout facilities, there's too much competition and we can't support it. And if the residents were aware of how much money that they would have to contribute to attend that gym, they wouldn't want it. And when I was running, I said that. I said, I haven't, digged in, I haven't dug into all the information. I didn't really know the outcome of the survey, but when they were asking me, I said, I would support the ice rink without having all this information, let me qualify it, because um, it is a one-of-a-kind thing. It does bring people here to the community. It is something to celebrate. I do think that I, maybe it's not. Maybe you can make it break even. I, I'm not, I don't know ice rinks that well, but I think it needs to be very well done. I know a lot of the people that use it for the professional, or not professional, they would like to think they're professionals, <laughs> but the Adult <laughs> Hockey League. and. Um, so I definitely think so, but the problem is, is like we did, we, you know, different things happened, and unfortunately last year happened, and that sidelined us. And you know, in the comprehensive plan, they talk about the rec center, and they talk about tying in this whole, um, this side here, this building, and the rec center, and making this corner kind of a community center. And they outline concepts and ideas in the comprehensive plan. Well, the plan's now due for an update. It's <laughs> five-year update was cited in here and you know and that's unfortunate I don't think we can wait but we could maybe start carving out that community center and really moving and looking at that piece and then dovetail that into a comprehensive plan but I think we need to start looking at that whole area as far as like the ice rink exactly the final design do we need a decision as far as just keeping the pumps or replacing compressors I mean I don't know what extreme I hate not having an overall plan and I don't like not having numbers right call okay. for the question Alderman Harper you are next I agree with you mayor that we need to make a decision on this uh, it's sat around for a while I was part of the traveling road show that went to Afton and Webster and looked at all their facilities and I agree that we're saturated with fitness facilities around this area so uh, I think making a decision and deciding which way we're going to go is important. And again, this is just the first part of it. That that way, at our next discussion, we can talk about those other parts of the rec center. The you know whether we want to do an addition onto the building and those kinds of things. So, um, but I just I think we need to be very clear with the public what direction we're going and whether we're going to keep the ice or we're not. That's the first question we need to answer in order to make it to to move on. I think. Alderman Leahy. What I'd like the board to consider is the physical move everything out of city hall over to the rec center remodel this facility to make it your community center to meet what the city needs and then put your rec center area up for sale 
market the fact that it has a skating rink if it's such a viable option for a commercial entity to take it over and do the retrofit to bring it up to the standards of still maintaining the properties here. My whole argument is, is that it's not cost effective for this community and to bring in facilities that we can't seem to be able to partnership and maintain that's the problem with the heights and that's why they reached out to the communities to get the partnerships in to help make their costs come about putting in a, another fitness center we got to find people that we're going to use it to be able to cover your operating cost i just don't see it financially feasible so i would su suggest remodeling this facility spend everybody over in the rec center until we get it done and then move the city hall back into this facility and market that as a commercial property development and see if they get a developer who will put it with the, rec with the skating ring in it if it's such a viable necessity. Okay, but I, I would make two points on that. One, what you're saying is then we would, we would get rid of the, the rec center. Yes, because sir. this building could only be we are landlocked yep. we can't expand this building at all we wouldn't have enough parking those kind of things so what you're basically saying is remodel city hall and then sell the rec center i would also disagree with you on the heights the heights when they built their center built it for a population larger than their community i think it was actually built for a population of forty thousand, and the reason being was they wanted to attract other communities because you re they realized that they couldn't support a facility mm -hmm. unless they had enough people and we again going back to the idea of building a something to compete with them we don't have a community big enough to do Correct. that or to support one um and so um, um so i guess your vote would be to, to sell well, the ice rink so that's but fine your but honor, I, you know again i think that's where we need to make that decision so that we can but uh, your honor two years ago place. this board after nine years of fighting with it to get a written agreement in the parks agreement between Richmond Heights, Brentwood, and Maplewood, all three communities were to bring that special piece of the puzzle to make the park department work. And yet, we don't get credit for having the skating rink in that part agreement. We're subsidizing by fifty-five, sixty-five thousand dollars depending on usage by year. So, this well, board again, I think this board has already discounted the fact that that skating rink is a good draw. Okay, Alderman Kramer. Yes, Your Honor. And I apologize. I know you were way I know. Past we're, we your, got uh, one deadline. more comment, and then I'll see if we get a motion. Um, I just wanted to clarify a uh, couple of points. The first one that I made earlier, when the study was originally undertaken in 2007, all we had access to at that time was the 2006 Comprehensive Plan and the Needs Assessment Study. Since that time, we did pay $75,000 to Canon Design mm -hmm. as a preferred consultant to help us advance the ball and arrive at some concepts and some further sampling they did do some additional sampling we have that data and i don't i don't know if all of the committee that's here tonight all the elected officials a have access to that data or b have access to how much it really costs the city to run the ice rink versus how much we take in to offset those expenses and whether or not we're borrowing to offset that expense and i think it's important that they know those numbers before they can really take an effective vote but i wanted to say that um, in response to the ice rink uh, all or nothing uh, as we voted at the public works committee for the study of this project the current recommendation from that committee was to try and include at least some area within the within the new building as long as we're going to reconstruct it um, to put some weights some some sort of a facility we're not going to compete with anybody else but at that is the one juncture, as, you, as it was mentioned here tonight, looking forward to the next generations. It's very prudent to have some of the design that was recommended by Canon going forward. It's probably unlikely that we're going to be do any, doing this without a bond issue. And as long as we were voting, we voted on to advance the comprehensive plan with the ice rink, with the meeting rooms, and with the uh, workout portion of the facility, locker rooms, code, sprinklers, everything that we needed. And all we were waiting on was the approval to get the comprehensive uh, conceptual drawing. Uh, but for that, uh, I think we're all on the same page, and that is if we can do it, and we would have done it a while ago, if the economy had been better, I, b I believe we would have gone further earlier with all these decisions. But we kind of put things on hold because the bottom fell out, didn't think timing was good. I think timing is getting better now. 
Uh, and the seriousness of a bond issue to make any of this happen is real because the building is falling apart. It's not uh, conducive to a, uh, any kind of a shelter, emergency shelter, which is what we use it for. And uh, I think that uh, summation, I think if it's possible for us to get everything that we wanted, as was voted on by the Public Works Committee, uh, then I would be in favor of that. Okay. I'll go and sign it. La last comment, and then we're going to see if we can get a motion okay. or not. Well, that's fine. And I, I didn't realize, I just thought that this conversation, and maybe I, I misunderstood from prior meetings, was just to get us start talking so that we say this is the priority. I didn't realize that we were making a motion and move, do you see what I mean? I thought it was just gonna set a direction. Okay. And I am in favor of, of the ICE, but, I, but before I would even like to vote on it, I would just like some basic numbers so that I would be able to tell my residents. I mean, I told them that when I was campaigning, but I think some numbers and a sense of that this, this, this center, is going to we're going to get some kind of a vision and and that you know we don't have to attack the whole thing but it's it's put into this so that you know we don't later say oh well we can't do that it's too late and so I, I think this is just a little fast to think okay I definitely eyes but I see us moving in that direction and, and I'm willing to meet again quickly about that You're and here's the reason I wanted to have that and, and and then we'll have one more comment and then either vote or not vote but and I appreciate everything you're saying and, and the lack of knowledge, but as a community, you know, and being part of the community, you know, we've been talking about this for a long time, and I think we need to let the public know what direction we're going as we move forward, too. Um, um, because, and that's, you know, one of the reasons I think, regardless of whatever we do, whether we keep the ice or not, has to be made before we can make any other decision. That's, that's the only reason I was asking for a motion tonight. If we want to postpone, that's fine, but at least, people know where, where we're going and what we're going to be talking about. Because I'm hoping that, you know, this will stir some of your residents to talk to you and say, this is the direction we'd like to go, um, you know, because that's what I hear. And, um, um, you know, but I think um, uh, we would get support for the ICE, but, uh, you know, if we can't make a decision or a vote on that portion of it tonight, that's fine. Um, you. But, we, we, you know, again, I think maybe that's where we're going to start our conversation at the next meeting. Okay. And I'm fine right. with that. My, I just want to make sure you understand what I'm saying, though, is that we don't know whether it's a $600,000 subsidy. I just want them to know that. Do you right. know what I mean? Going no, that's forward. Fine. Right. That's yeah. it. Okay. Alman, Roberts, and I was just going to say, do you just want to do a straw poll? Or, I mean, in principle, we're you know in favor of this or not? Well, how about if we just do a straw poll if people want to vote on this tonight? Uh, whether to keep the ice as part of the new rec uh, the renovations to the rec center. That's the only question I, w I would like to answer because I think it gives us a lot of conversation to think about for our next meeting. And, and, um, but if we don't want to vote, we don't want to vote, so that's fine. I would at least like to amend that vote that it's pending getting numbers of subsidy. Well, that's fine. What I then mean. let's just not vote. I, Why again, don't we make the, the direction, Your Honor, if I may? Motion to assign staff to raise the figures for running the Parks Department and try to estimate what if any subsidy is given to the Parks Department due to the fact that you're running a skating rink and to have that information available to the Board of Aldermen for the June 11th meeting. Great. Okay. I'll I'll put like that in the form of a motion. Add to that that we also include the uh, previous three sets of minutes from the Public Works Committee where the discussion was held about this topic, just for background information. That's fine. Is and just okay? a reminder, we have the June 8th retreat. retreat. Right. So a little discussion there, maybe. It was going to be a long enough retreat. That's why we're talking <laughs> tonight. <laughs> That's the motion, Your Honor. Okay. No and with, with the Tom's amendment? You're willing to, to add Andy? Uh, yes, I'll okay. be happy to accept the amendment. And so is that a second on? Second. Okay. All right. So motion is by all and lay a second by Alderman Kramer to gather that information. We'll try to get that to the board as soon as possible. Uh, prior to that meeting, so it shouldn't be that difficult to, to get some of that. Okay. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. And now, in closing, you can see why um, <laughs> <laughs> why we need to have that discussion and make some decisions here at the board. Or I don't think we'll ever get anywhere. So, okay. Thank you. And thank you for your patience. We went um, 15 minutes longer than I thought. So, uh, public safety. I know, when know, we had a meeting, but no, there's not a report. No, okay, thank you. Uh, Director of Planning, we have a couple items on this evening for a conditional use permit. Sorry, Ellen. Uh, 
Bed Bath & Beyond has requested a special use permit for 10 storage containers. Bed Bath & Beyond is located at 54 Brentwood Promenade. Um, they would like the containers on a temporary basis to hold extra stock needed for the incoming college, um, you know, fall college season. Um, the 10 containers would be located in back of the store. They wanted to start on um, June 15th and have the containers in place again for 90 days for the back to school rush. Um, I'm not sure if the store manager is here or not. Um, he indicated he could attend. Are you? Okay. Okay. So. If anybody has any questions, so we do have an applicant in this present. So, any questions? Okay. I think we should be fine. Um, if we have a motion, please. I move for adoption, Your Honor. And second. Second. Motion is made by Alderman Roberts and second by Alderman Saunders to approve the conditional use permit, um, our special use permit for Bed Bath and Beyond. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. no. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Do you want to roll call? roll call? I'm sorry. Is that okay? Those two? All right. Sorry. I didn't think they'd be yet. Sorry. Okay. Um, did you get that? So Alderman Leahy, Leahy and, and Alderman Harper were no. opposed. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Your Honor? Yes. Alderman Kramer? It, it shouldn't impact this decision, but it, uh, just to, we can get a clarification from the, the uh, representative. My understanding is our other. If you could please come and give us your name and address, please. My understanding is our other <coughs> tenant in the promenade is now owned under contract by Bed Bath and Beyond Cost Plus. Cost Plus Wood Market. We currently own yes. It, so it's closed. Uh, they close in August. Okay. Didn't know if the other board members knew that. Okay. It, if I may clarify on the sure. actual, it's the merchandise is for incoming college students that go to Washu and SLU. We have a program called Pack and Hold where they actually go to their local Bed Bath & Beyond and we hold their merchandise till they come to town and then they come to my building, pick it up and pay for it. Um, okay. Last year we did this for 658 students, um, which was an increase of 120 from the previous year. So they're, incre they're purchasing it online or, or? No, they purchase it physically in my building. We just hold it I know, it for but them. and then you hold it for them and then they actually, yes. that was my point. They yeah. actually pay for it and? In Brentwood, in my store, it. yes. We like that. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs> Only. Well, my problem is the inconsistency of how we treated Walgreens with their request for a single <coughs> container, and this is for ten containers. I don't think it's proper to tell Walgreens, "Thank you, but you can't do it," and turn around and allow ten times the amount happening with another vendor in the same in the same town. I'm afraid we're going to get some backlash with our own businesses. And I do believe that staff eventually did have to go around the city of Brentwood and RPM and a couple other facilities had containers that were not proper. I go, we're, we're setting up the inconsistency again of our own codes. And I don't think that's a good way to proceed. Well, again, just as clarification with Walgreens, you know, they had gotten a, uh, this is the first time for Bed Bath and Beyond has made this request to us. Uh, Walgreens had done that probably mm -hmm. over multiple years. I'm mm -hmm. saying six, seven, eight years. They had gotten one every Christmas. Um, we uh, talked to them, and when we approved one, they agreed that they would build a permanent facility. Mm -hmm. yes, and uh, as, when that was a condition of them getting that permit that year, and then they reneged on that agreement. Yes, so, um, um, you know, they, they have something that they, they've used all the time. So, you know, maybe 10 years from now, if this continues, we may make them uh, uh, have that additional storage. But this is the first time this applicant's done that. And that's what these, these special use permits are for. Alderman Kramer. Additionally, Your Honor, the Walgreens is the, that parcel is a party to a cross access easement agreement, which allows for parking in that area and access back and forth through that area, which was in my opinion, complicated by the Walgreens ongoing storage. Okay. All right. Alderman Harper, I'm sorry. Did uh, you have it? That was my rationale for voting okay. uh, in the negative. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I would like, I mean, actually, it's a, it's a key point what they're doing with the students here, um, you know, for the general public. Uh, actually, the, the busiest time of the year for our promenade center uh, for uh, uh, stores like Bed Bath & Beyond, specifically for Target, um, it's not the holiday season, it's the back to school season for the universities. Um, we generate a lot of business from those schools coming here and doing their shopping for the dorms and those kinds of things. So um, uh, we like the fact that they're ordering and paying for it here. So thank you. Um, Ways and Means Committee. 
Alderman, I'm sorry. Sorry, I had one other item. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, just a quick update on 2301 um, Brentwood Boulevard. The last meeting there was a question about the status of that project, which was the former printing company. Mm -hmm. um, they actually um, were able to drill an additional well on the former Rug World property. That property owner did agree. Um, they were waiting for the results from that. They actually received those today. And the numbers were um, acceptable. And so now the numbers being the results from the, um, the, the well that was oil checking the soil samples. Um, so now the uh, property owners are ready to submit their remediation plan to DNR, which they expect about a 60-day turnaround time for DNR to approve that, and at, w at which time after which then they would um, start submitting their plans to the city for um, demolition and then remediation, which would they expect would be contained just to their site based on the results of their samplings. Um, they'll just have to dig, um, excavate quite a bit from the site, but not from um, surrounding sites. Great, thank you. I had forgotten about that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, ways and means. Yes, Your Honor. We have some previous minutes that the committee is waiting on uh, some potential revision to and approval of, which we hope to have for you at the next meeting. And the next Ways and Means meeting is now scheduled for 4.30 on June the 12th. And we should have a notice going out either this evening or tomorrow. Main topic at that meeting, which uh, we hope we get good attendance on, is the uh, revision to the city's employee handbook. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Oh, I'm I'll sorry. I just have a question answer. about that. I, with the handbook, I just, on the bottom of the pages, it says it's effective June 1st, 2012. Is that... It's on all the pages. I thought, oh, I then we we just picked a date. Yeah. It's whenever you all adopt. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Because I, I thought, oh, I don't. Know. It's going to be bad. effective June first. Wow. Okay. Alderman Lay. If I may, um, Alderman Kramer is the chairman of Ways and Means. We did a vote on what to do with the surplus Kenilworth money. That will come back at the next meeting. I believe the vote was two to one to bring it to the board of aldermen. Next meeting. It will be on the agenda at the next meeting. Ah, uh, okay. is it, well. Well, I, I, we can. I mean, if you want, I mean, we can. Well, I, I will tell you. I have a little bit of more information for you. When I heard that, and what the discussion was is that we received a pastor amount from um, uh, the Brentwood Square this year, an amount of three hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars in additional sales tax. And what was voted on, it ways and means, was to use that to pay down the bonds. Um, in, instead of putting that into the uh, city revenue. So, um, and I have a little bit more information, but I'll turn it, Alderwoman Saunders, you? Well, I had this issue to be brought up under new business. Um, I spoke with my fellow Alderman Leahy, and I, and I thought I was, the timing was to bring it up under new business. So is that where I bring it up? Ideally. Yeah. Okay, mm. then I'll, I'll hold off. Thank you. I apologize. Thank well, <laughs> we can talk about. Yeah, we, we've already started. Um, do you? I mean, do you want to make a comment? Because yes, I do have some additional information. So. I do. I move that the three hundred fifty three hundred fifty six thousand six hundred eighty seven dollars and twenty one cents in municipal revenue from the Brentwood Square Shopping Center be transferred to the Redemption Fund to call additional bonds as approved by the Ways and Means Committee. This will pay down the debt. There a second? I'll second the motion, Your Honor. Okay. Um, just uh, uh, so you understand, in doing so, um, we will not knock any time off of the bonds. Um, these bonds are scheduled to be paid off um, in the fall of 2014, I believe. It uh, might be November 2014. Um, and our, our payments are scheduled. So we only make two payments on the bonds a year. And so, uh, and the payments are a little bit over a million dollars uh, in the final payment. So if, if we contribute this money to the, to the bonds at this point, what will happen is our reserve fund is already in place. So what will happen is um, we'll make that, we will save some interest, there's no doubt, mm -hmm. over that period of time. But at the end of, the, at the end of 2014, we're just going to get that money back because it's basically going to go into, into the, you know, build up our reserves because Again, we're, we're only, we're only, we have these scheduled payments, and if we we're making a million dollar payment, we would knock off one payment and save six months. But because we're only making $357,000, it's not gonna knock out a payment. It's only gonna be a third of a payment. And so um, uh, we will save some interest, 
um, but um, it's not really going to be um, a, a huge savings when you look at the present value of being able to maybe use that for something else or put, put it in our own reserves and, and draw interest on it. Um, the, the other thing is, I think there, the concern was that, that we had made promises that we would, um, you know, use all the ex revenues to pay down the bonds as soon as possible. And I agree with that to a certain extent. Um, with the, you know, we've done that in our redevelopment agreements. But it specifically says in this redevelopment agreement that if we met certain levels of sales and if we got to those, that we would have those pass-through amounts. And we have had those funds and used them for city revenues in the past uh, because Brentwood Square has been above what the projections were. So, you know, on one hand, I don't think it makes that much of a difference because we're going to get it back in 2014. Um, but, um, you know, that wasn't, you know, the idea that we were putting all of our money back into this project and paying down these bonds. That's, that isn't the agreement. Um, the agreement was that if we were over a certain level, we would have that pass through. So, um, that may be part of the discussion that needs to be taken into account. We could get those actual numbers uh, for you, if you'd like, from Stiefel. So, all the women's honors. Uh, well, Your Honor, I'm just wondering why that information wasn't available at the Ways and Means meeting. It, it's nothing, it, we don't have the numbers, but that's no, nothing new, and it, it should have been presented at that meeting. And then, are you telling me that we already, the next payment, when it's due, it'll, it's a million dollars, let's say? We already have a million set aside, so this is just, or this would go to help create that million. No, I mean, if, if you contribute, well, first of all, I didn't know that the idea of, of put, using those funds to pay down the bonds was going to be part of your discussion. That had never been brought up to me before. I didn't it find out It was on the agenda. Yeah, I mean. Well, I didn't see your agenda for that meeting. To, I, I didn't the see item It was, was in the, the city administrator the, report. Right. Prior, uh, excuse me. I'm just, okay. I'm just providing the information, and it was in the Ways and Means in the report that we discussed at Ways and Means. It was the top. That's how we made the motion. Right, but I don't think exactly. I didn't know exactly. before your meeting of Ways and Means that you were going to discuss using the money right. to pay down the bonds right. and and giving it back to. The, so I didn't get those numbers because I didn't know that that was something that you were going to be discussing. I thought your discussion was going to be how that money was going to be spent or used for the city. In 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 general terms. So when it came to my attention that you wanted to, that the Ways and Means Committee wanted to use it to pay down the bonds, that's when I went and got the additional information. And I had to call Stiefel to get it. I didn't get it until last Friday. So. Um, and I, you know, I'm not disputing. It's just that it was, in the, it was listed as the yeah. option in the city administrator report. And Alderman um, Kramer, chair, knew knew that that was the option. That was the discussion at the table. Okay. But, but so I, didn't I, know. I know you right. didn't. No, right. no. I'm, so. I, that's what I'm just saying, though. But we did, and, okay. and the committee did. Yeah. So, and, and again, you know, again, if we had 10 years left, you know, it may save it may mm -hmm. save more interest. But I think the um, uh, I will be able to get you those numbers, and and um, you know, again, it, it's basically like putting it into reserves. But if we're going to be saving interest instead of making interest, is what it boils down to. So, all the one. Well, and, I'm just saying that, too, when we had it, we, had, we, we, we discussed the issues that were up, and, and none of them seemed to be an emergency or, you know, something that couldn't have been covered in the budget. So I felt like it was, you know, we had a thorough discussion, and, and the issue was well covered. No, that's fine. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. We um, have a motion and a second. Oh, Governor. so the motion was? To pay, to use the full amount of the pass-through and pay down the bonds. Okay, do you want to get the other financial information before you make that decision? No. Okay, all right. We'll roll call. Alderman Saunders? Yes. Alderman Manister? Yes. Alderman Leahy? Yes. Alderman Tui? I abstain. Alderman Kramer? Uh, take this opportunity to say that when the meeting actually took place, I didn't know the information as far as uh, the detail that you were able to secure. I was against using all the funds uh, for the purposes for which they were voted on. Uh, one of the items that I was particularly concerned for was our uh, STP grant uh, pedestrian project on Rose Avenue uh, that our uh, director of development came to us and suggested that we should um, prudently secure some funds potentially from this windfall. Uh, for her use in negotiating the rights of way, which we do need for that project. If she didn't need them, she could give them back, or the, that particular component could give them back. Excuse if, me, Your Honor, the parliamentary procedure, point of order. We're at a roll call. It's a yes or no vote. 
discussion should have been held prior to the vote being taken. I'm allowed to give my reason. No, for sir. The no and vote. Under parliamentary vote procedure, yeah. you're allowed a yes or no. My reason for the no vote is that the allow amount of money that's being allotted is not going for the purposes for which I voted against. So therefore, my vote is no. Ottoman Robertson. No. Ottoman Wynn. No. Ottoman Harper. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll use those funds to pay down the bonds. Um, and, um, you know, on one hand, I think it's a good thing because I would have liked to have seen uh, the majority of this money uh, put into our reserves to build up our reserves. Uh, we'll just get it back in two years um, is what it amounts to. Um, um, you know, we'll save a little bit of interest, but we won't be making interest as well. So, okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, City Attorney, anything to report? No report, Your Honor. City Clerk Administrator? Um, yes, Your Honor. We heard from MSD this evening. Their board has approved the $500,000 reimbursement cost that the city would use to return the properties at 2761 and 2805 Mary Avenue to open space. Great. Good. Your Honor. Alderman Leahy. Did we get the environmental study back? on those, I assume we're talking the executive parkway. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did we get the internal environmental study to the point that there is no hazardous material in taking those buildings down or is that yet to be done? Yet to be done. Yet to be done. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. uh, Excise Commissioner, nothing to report this evening. Library? No report. Uh, Municipal League, I already commented on the dinner. Again, please, if you'd like to attend, I think it'd be worth your, worth your time. Uh, communications? No report, Your Honor. Historical Society? No Nothing, Lee? Historical? Okay. No report. No closed session. Uh, any unfinished business? Any new business? And I have one more new piece of business. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Woman Sanders. That's all right. <laughs> and this one, I move that the following standing committees, Ways and Means, Public Safety, and Public Works, have regularly scheduled monthly meetings and if needed, an optional second regularly scheduled monthly meeting in order to better facilitate the committee members' regular attendance, thereby allowing committee members to fulfill their ob the obligations of their position. This also provides better transparency to the residents of when the meetings are held. Okay, we have a second. So moved. Okay, any comments? Alderman Harper. Well, I, I like that idea. Uh, just trying to schedule time off work. It's good to know when the meeting's going to be, so I can sure. make sure it meets. It's a good Call idea. In. Kramer, yeah, um, did you finish? I'm sorry. Yep. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I, I am uh, against that measure for the most part, not for the complete part, mainly because um, over the last, I don't know what it's been, decade, 15 Ever. years, 20 <laughs> years, whatever it's been. Um, the committee, the committee meetings, and certainly my exposure to the Ways and Means Committee meeting was uh, centered around pretty much the business of the city, and I don't believe that the city business should have to wait until a regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, there are many opportunities in the past uh, under previous administrations where we had certain committee chairmen where meetings uh, were not scheduled uh, in a timely fashion so that we had, what we ended up with was, was bottlenecks and we ended up with long meetings. Uh, there are many times when you have, even on Board of Aldermen meeting, when it gets to be a once a month um, or rescheduled meeting where we have a, a laundry list of items that need to be discussed and it makes for a very long meeting. Um, as well, there are times when the city administrator or, or portions of our city need action right away. Uh, I think it's important for the committee chairman uh, to uh, work with the city administrator as they have. Uh, it, 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 it usually works pretty well to schedule meetings and um, what I pledged to do to our committee, which wasn't done in the past, which was to poll our committee members and give them an opportunity uh, to work on at least a couple dates that we selected instead of dictating this is the meeting date. Uh, I also pledged, uh, which is different from a standing meeting time, is to possibly have some meetings in the evening uh, where we work ahead of time with staff to, uh, to be able to attend those meetings so that our, res our residents can more aptly uh, be able to attend and take part in uh, those meetings with their public comment. 
Uh, presently, uh, if we were to have, for example, a 4.30 meeting at a preset time, um, as we've seen over the last uh, couple of months, uh, there have been times where if there's no business, that meeting gets canceled. And uh, I like to offer up uh, the most possibility for the resident input as possible. And uh, by giving them the opportunity to come to maybe more than one meeting a month, I think we do that. And I think that uh, if we work with the city administrator properly, uh, we can do an efficient and uh, prudent scheduling of the meetings to properly take care of our city business and to also accommodate the schedules of all the committee members. Any other comments? Oh, Woman Saunders. Um, yes, you know, I thought about this long and hard, and this is a courtesy that is provided in the professional world. And I volunteer on several other committees and organizations and have commitments to them. And I take my commitments very seriously. And I schedule my schedule around them. When I commit, my name's on the line. And so when I want to go, you know, and, and, and somebody else is saying we've got to schedule a meeting, I'm like, well, I'm a member of Ways and Means and we're meeting here, or I'm a member of St. Mary Magdalene Church decorating and we meet regularly this time. And when I schedule my vacations, I will be scheduling them around these meetings. And the committee is where a lot of work gets done. And um, I feel like we're moving in a direction with professionals, with Bola and Octavia and the Chiefs and that, that I'm hoping that we are getting to a more oversight role. We're getting wonderful reports now and more information. And I, I would like to move in the direction to where we, we see that if there's a true emergency, I'm always available, to, you know, 24 hours, but it should be regular scheduled meetings and we should be able to accommodate the business. It's how we operate with plan, planning and zoning. There's the scheduled meeting and then the site plan. and. It's, that's the true courtesy to the residents is to know when they can come and when the meeting because they can schedule their calendars. And I can't schedule out any further than two weeks or a month because I don't know when the meeting's going to be. And I, I really want <coughs> to be at every meeting. I don't know that I always will be able to, but I'm going to try my hardest because I really want to do this job. Okay. Almond Wayne. Well, I think we've now got one way, uh, and safety committee will meet regularly at a certain time. But uh, I wonder what weight does this really carry as far as passing this? It's a nice thing, but what could you do? If the person didn't want to schedule it, you certainly can't throw them out of office or get rid of them. But I, th I think we should have, but I think each committee needs to get together and come up with what they feel is a good time. We have three standing committees, and the reason each group couldn't get together with the leader whoever it is, and come up with a time. And, right. and then I, I agree with you. We should have it on a monthly. We are going to have it on a monthly basis. And, and the, the chairman always has the option to, you know, again, if there's no business, they don't have to have the That's meeting. Right. You know, but, uh, but all the women's honors. I just need to make a clarification. Alderman Wynn, I am not opposed at all to what time the meetings is scheduled or what day it's even scheduled. It's just that right. I want to know right. out right. three months when it is so that I can do my schedule will, around that. that. And um, that's what I was looking for is all. But right. other than that. Okay. I'm with you. Okay. Uh, roll call. Alderman Saunders? Yes. Alderman Manister? Yes. Alderman Leahy? Yes. Alderman Tui? Yes. Alderman Kramer? No. Alderman Robertson? Yes. Ottoman Wynn? No. Ottoman Harper? Yes. Okay. Next item, public comment. If anybody would like to address the board, please come uh, forward. I'm finished. Oh, I'm business. sorry. Do you have another item? I'm sorry. Excuse no, me, Mayor. Could I? New business still. Yeah. I thought we, this was new business. We were on it. He asked for old, old you, That was old business. No. Could I make no. That was new. Oh, well, I'd like to make. Uh, yes. Um, since it passed, I just want everybody to know I'm, I'm certainly willing to do what we said on there. I, the question right. was, and I was trying to get out of it. Now that we pass it, certainly we will abide by it. Okay. Are we still Thank on you. new business? Yes. Your Honor, if I may have the floor. Sure. I have two issues I'd like to bring in as new business. The first one is the Ward 3 meeting for the month of May will be May 28th at uh, 7 p.m. up here at the council room for anybody that'd like to attend. Mm. The second issue, Your Honor, that I'd like to bring to the board's attention, and I assume that it would go to maybe Public Works Committee. The 
June election that will be coming up in the, the general election in June has a bond issue on it from MSD to, to go with. MSD uh, a while back had what they called the impervious surface uh, charge that they were charging resi the residential and business properties for property that portions of your property that did not absorb water to work with. That uh, that charge was found. Um, on, well, it was a defined as a tax that did not go to the voters for approval. So MSD had to remove that bill, that charge from the bills. They're coming back with a charge now to the bills, asking for some uh, funds to help work on covering the cost of fixing the pipes and maintaining the system. I do believe that the impervious surface b charge will probably come back to the residents uh, through the MSD program. The Board of Aldermen passed an ordinance in the city of Brentwood requiring property owners that did not have asphalt or concrete driveways to, within a changeover of the property ownership, to make the driveway uh, asphalt or concrete. I would like the Public Works Committee to entertain looking at that bill and maybe in order to avoid an additional tax, consider the option of going back to a pervious driveway and allowing them, instead of requiring that upon change of ownership, the impervious driveway is being put in. So you're, hmm. you want us to consider allowing gravel driveways again? Yes, sir. Okay. Just so you understand. Yes. Your okay. Honor, there are there are pervious concrete and asphalt surfaces now. They're a lot more expensive than the normal materials, right. but they are available. Yep. We're discussing those today. We, actually, we could yeah. we could make that definition. Okay. Um, is that something? Is that a motion? It's a request to go to the committee to have them entertain That's looking right. at that at that. If chapter that is changed, I mean, I you know, again, that would be something to really go back to plan zoning. Yeah. Okay, so. if you want to send it there. <laughs> no, Ellen. we can discuss it committee first, I'll say. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, now, if anybody would like to address the board, please come forward and give us your name and address. Karen Smith, 8930 Harrison. Um, so maybe some of you that are, have more expertise in this area can explain to me what the limited part of the limited obligation um, uh, means um, and then um, when you said that um, the entities that we are providing the tax exempt bonds to um, that we're not really giving them anything extra but if they had to go out and actually take a loan out to do that that would be taxed that, that would not be tax exempt is that is that correct I mean we're we're yeah. offering them to be able to get their financing through us at a tax exempt uh, level, as opposed to if they had to go actually go out and borrow money to do that project, they would not have that advantage because they're a for-profit corporation, a private developer. Well, you borrow funds, you don't pay taxes on borrowed funds. Right. You, know, you, you, you get to take the... the, the, the you, you only pay taxes on income. Borrowed money is not income. That's so what if they Actually, took out? Let's not get into discussion. We'll right, all right. Or a bond, if they had a, could, I guess they couldn't float a bond either, could they? Well, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find out some answers on that on my own then. Um, and then when we're saying that we are not paying taxes, we actually are paying taxes every time we buy from those organizations down there because there is an additional extra tax that is assessed. I just wanted to make that clarification. Um, and then I do appreciate, um, Alderman Tui, your explanation on the fixed and variable. So did we, and again, you can answer this after I get down so you don't have to enter into discussion with the public because I know you don't like to do that. Um, but if we, um, so was the risk that we actually initially had a variable rate on whatever financing vehicle that we were using there versus a fixed rate? Um, so that was, that was my last question. And then um, in relation to some of the things that came up in tonight's meeting, are all of the spaces in that Drury um, schematic that we saw, so are all of those spaces public parking? Because I know that is still a thing that, uh, a question for me that's still out there is I'm still unsure what that whole public parking uh, agreement was all about with Drury. So are the, all of those public, are all of those spaces going to be public parking? Because I thought I heard at one point that everything was going to be public down there. Um, and then I guess lastly, I, I, I was not aware that we had fire uh, 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 people 
um, without appropriate fire gear for protection. That is extremely um, disturbing to me that um, our fire equipment was um, had not or had been last looked at like 20 years ago, and the recommendation is to look at that every five years. Um, and so I guess um, hopefully, as has been indicated, they, they will be protected going forward. I think that's very disturbing, and um, hopefully as a board, we'll look at how that happened and understand so that we don't let that happen again. Um, and then my last question is, is the police department protected? Have we looked at that to make sure that they have no outstanding um, uh, equipment purchases that need to be made to protect them because that actually you know when I look at what city services need to provide I think rec center is great and wonderful but we need police fire and trash and those people need the resources that they need to be able to do their job I'm not talking about overpaying them or fraudulent overtime I'm not talking about doing that but they need their equipment that they need to be able to do their job appropriately thank you agree 100% and recycle, and recycle. Uh, <laughs> um, but just to try to answer a couple questions real quickly. Again, the, the, the developers are not, once a project is completed, they, okay, they, they use the money to develop their site. Once the project is completed, um, their notes, the money that they borrowed and, and the money they used to, to build that project, uh, the public assistance por portion, is then at some point turned into bonds and issued to the general public to buy those bonds. For instance, with the Meridian, uh, the bonds that were called, um, all of those bonds for that project were owned by two insurance companies, um, or pension funds, I'm sorry. They're, so all of them were owned by one, by two groups. Um, and the reason they're tax exempt, because it makes the interest rate lower for us, and the reason they're tax exempt for them and the reason they want them is because if they're not tax exempt, you have to pay a higher interest rate on it because then they have to, they have to pay taxes on their income. So they're willing to accept a lower rate bond that's guaranteed by taxes, um, and they're, they're willing to do that because then they don't have to pay income tax on maybe that spread between a 4% municipal bond and a 6% private bond. So that's why people are willing to buy municipal bonds. But they're not held by the developers. In some cases they are. Jury's gonna hold their own notes uh, through their project. But in majority of the cases, they're issued and sold on the, on the market and uh, sold to other investors that are using those for long-term investments. Um, and with respect to the parking, um, I'm pretty sure the only part of the parking that is not public is parking designated for the restaurant and the last floor of the garage. There's the last two floors of the garage. I think it's the last floor of the garage. I'd have to go back and look at my notes. Everything else is public parking. So, all of them in two years. I was going to comment again on the, on the tax issue of the bonds. Again, it's the bond holder that's avoiding taxes. Right. So, it's not uh, Drury, or I'm sorry, it's not the Meridian Project development people, it's the people buying the bonds. Uh, I think in the open market, for some reason, people have this bias towards buying municipal bonds. They love them, they love the idea, they're not going to pay taxes on them. Even if you found an equivalent corporate bond, it's the same yield. Uh, after the tax effect, just for some reason, average Joe loves munis. Uh, I just think there's a sense where they don't have to pay the government their money. <laughs> I, I see that all the time. Right. Um, additionally, as far as the risk, again, there, you have to have a crystal ball to really know which option of a swap to be on because you have to figure how future interest rates are going to move. I think from a planning perspective, it's easier to have a fixed rate that you know it's coming in. And that's where you're talking about the risk. The risk is that you know, interest rates drop even lower, because usually variable rates are set off some sort of metric, like an index, and there'll be a little addition to it. And if that index goes down, your interest revenue is going down. Now, if it goes up, your interest revenue is going to go up. But no one knows for sure which way it's going to go. So someone that's more uh, aggressive and willing to take on more risk, they're going to take a variable, because they want, they want to try and hit the home run. I think if you're a government institution, a little more conservative, we want to be more of a singles hitter, you want to take that <laughs> fixed rate. So what did you say? What did you say? we took the fixed. Well, we had the swap. No, we had the swap. Huh? In the meridian, the there's a swap. A it's a variable rate interest, yes. It changes. We had fixed and we swapped. Well, let's not get, we can discuss right. So, uh, right. In the swap, it's a variable rate. Okay. What did we do? What did we do? Okay. And there's, anyways, the point I'm trying to get at from a technical standpoint, there's no right or wrong. I mean, there really isn't. Yeah. 
We had a swap agreement that is the bonds are a variable rate. I believe the interest rate changes either daily or weekly on the bonds. And again, you're, you're hedging to a certain extent, and you think that in the long run you're going to save money on that agreement. But we put other things in place to make sure that those bondholders were uh, protected. Like I said, the letter of credit. The city has no obligation beyond um, the revenues that are generated from that site. Um, and, um, you know, we did the best we can with the information that we had at the time and made that decision. And we made that almost five years ago. So um, we'll continue to try to move forward. Time to adjourn, isn't it? Any other comments? Motion to adjourn, Your Honor. And second. second. All in favor? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, I don't think you finished all the Oh, I'm oh, sorry. You have I another apologize. public comment. I'm sorry. I think we've gone over the time limit, though. Fifteen minutes was all, Mayor. Pozo, twenty-two eleven, 11 St. Clair. And I just wanted to thank the board for that last, I guess, is it called a resolution, where um, we are going to have um, fixed dates. Because I do like to put it on, on my calendar. I am a resident, so I do appreciate it. Thank you. Chairman Geppert. Um, John Geppert, 9360 Pine, Chairman of Planning and Zoning. Um, I don't have a problem that you all allowed Bed Bath & Beyond to do what they do, but what I'm going to ask you to do is in August go down and take a look at what the place is going to, you know, visibly um, look like. These containers are incredibly messy, and when you build the Drury, half the rooms are going to look down onto this site. And it's, it's a, it, it's, it, it becomes, you know, really a very unattractive sort of, sort of addition. Now, the back of any commercial development tends not to be particularly attractive anyway. But when you start cluttering them up with these containers, I'm, 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 I'm just going to ask that each of you go down there in August, drive back in there, and see what it looks like, and contemplate how we perhaps move forward because... Ten containers is a lot of containers, and when, when you get them all back there, if you think they're going to line them up like ducks, they're not. They're going to dump them, and I, I, I'm, I'm just suggesting that this is probably not a precedent that we want to set without really going and taking a look at what the impact is. Thank you. On that, I'd like to take um, I, the motion to rescind that resolution. I mean, no. no I, well, I, you can make the motion. I, I can do it next time. Then I, I don't know how to do that, but I wish that information had been, you know, rookie. Sorry. <laughs> so. Your Honor, you have a motion and a second. Yes. Motion was made by Lay, second by Alderman Wynn. All in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>